leadoff man is brought to you by your friendly Dodge dealers. Check out Dodge's lineup of the 95 cars and trucks. Steve Stone down on beautiful Wrigley Field. This is the final day of the season and has been our tradition over the many years. We talked to the manager of the Chicago Cubs on the final day, and there's very happy news today, and that is that Jim Riggleman, who had a contract through 1996, has been extended through 1997, and his coaching staff will be coming back in its entirety in 1996. And Jim, you'd have to feel that this is a very happy day for you and the staff and your continuation of the Chicago Cubs and trying to make them better on a daily basis. Well, very much so, Steve. Uh, you know, this is the only thing I want to do is to, is to manage in the big leagues. And uh, uh, there's no better place to manage than in Chicago. And I think that, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of makes a statement to the players that uh, Andy McPhail, Ed Lynch are going to be here. And now Jim's going to be here a couple more years. So let's let's make sure we're doing things the way that we all want them done. And, and we're going to continue to grow. And, and hopefully uh, it, it'll be something that will be great for this organization because we want to bring a winner here. And I, I know as long as Andy and Ed are here, it's going to get done. You took it till two days left in the season with a chance for a wild card berth. And yesterday the Cubs lost Colorado one anyway. You would have been eliminated. But you put together an eight game winning streak where every day was like the World Series for the Cubs. And did you see something in your ball club that perhaps you hadn't seen earlier in the season. Well I, I think we saw a, a little higher level of play but but I, I've always maintained that the intensity level on this ball club has been been real high all year and you know you know Steven in, in a long season this year 144 instead of 162 there, there's going to be days in the season where your ball club is just not up to that high level but those have been to a minimum this year uh, I'm very happy with the effort and intensity that, that the players gave on a daily basis but certainly this last week or 10 days when we really needed to show that we can win ball games against a good ball club and at home. We need to win ball games at home. I, I think our players did take it up a level. Well, Jim, sit right here and stay with us because we'll be back with more with the manager, Jim Riggleman, coming up after these messages. Well, look who's here. Herschel Walker and Tony Dorsett, two of the best college football running backs I ever saw. I'll bet you they're swapping some pretty good football stories. Next time, I'm telling you, Tony, right profile. Really, hers? I've always favored my left, man. Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Touchdown! You think next time we should wear the helmets? In my case, the helmet is definitely on. Warning. Another dull Tuesday coming up. For your own sake, save it. Serve Rosetto Pasta. Your family will get an authentic pasta dinner with the ease of boiling water. And your Tuesday dinner experience will change. Sibling rivalry will disappear. Telemarketers will stop calling. The dog will lie down with the cat. And a comb will descend as Rosetto's tender tortellini with its ricotta romano and parmesan cheeses finds its mark. So get the Rosetto out of the freezer case. It works. It's been tested by people with mouths. And Tuesday can happen any minute now. Got something different for your sensitive teeth. Well, you can take it back. My dentist wants me to use Sensodyne. This is Sensodyne. Sensodyne with baking soda. No pain. My mouth feels fresh and clean. Sensodyne with baking soda. All you feel is fresh and clean. When you're Barry Sanders, one of the quickest men in the NFL, some days it seems like no one can catch you. Hey, come on, man, I'll make it easy. Now at McDonald's, convert two bucks into two sausage McMuffins with egg, only for a limited time. Hey, look who's here. Hey, look Slow-mo gel. There's a few building blocks for the future with this ball club. The one thing you never really know is how the winter is going to play out economically or any way else. But when you look ahead at the Cubs' future, Jim, knowing you're going to pilot this team for the next couple of years, who would you like to have back as far as position players are concerned? Well, you know, first of all, I'd like to, uh, to preface it by saying, you know, ideally you'd like to have them all back. And I think every manager is going to say that. You know, uh, certainly I don't want to be sending any negative message to any of our players. But... The, the reality of the situation is the economics of the game dictate that everybody, every roster in baseball is going to have some overturning. But certainly, uh, you know, with the things that, that the way Mark Grace came out and played this year, you know, he was a free agent. He could have gone anywhere. The statement that he's made this year, uh, Brian McRae, the job that he's done, uh, the year Sammy put together, uh, our catching, the way service and parent have done their jobs. Uh, I, I think there are a few uh, fundamental areas there, you know, as I said, Sammy, and uh, the, the things that they did, it, it would be tough to go out there without them. So uh, as important as all of them are, 
there's a lot of questions to answer, and, and certainly we do have a, key, uh, a few key cogs there that we, we don't want to be without. I know you'll be spending most of this winter thinking about how to make this ball club a little better so that next year you won't have to worry about the wild card. You'll be contending for division title. And when you look ahead at 1996, would power and perhaps a number one or two starter be high on your list? Well, those two things are always going to be high on anybody's list. You know, uh, I really think, Steve, that, that um, rather than try to overhaul or, or, or really pinpoint a specific area, I, I, I really would like to go into it saying, whatever we have, let's try to take it up just a little bit. As you, you, know, you said, improve a little bit. If you improve each area of your game a little bit, the base running, the, hit, the situational hitting, uh, a little better efficiency in the bullpen, a, a little more consistency out of our stars. If everything improves just a little bit, you add it all together, it, it turns into a, a big improvement instead of a, a little improvement. And, and we do need more than just a little improvement to, to catch Cincinnati right now. You'll be going into next spring training with an idea that a division title is certainly something that you would want. With that in mind, will you do anything different next spring, your second spring with a ball club that you know pretty much already, as opposed to what you did last spring when you had to get to know everybody? Well, yeah, we'll probably get a little more specific in some things in spring training with a lot more time to do it in. Uh, we'll probably take on the, uh, as I said, situational hitting. You know, we'll probably try to uh, really focus on that. And, and in spring training this past year, the program that Tom Gamboa put together for us, we'll go right with that. It was an outstanding spring, but we'll have, uh, you know, uh, six weeks instead of three weeks to work it. And, and I think that the one thing we will probably try to do is, is to incorporate a little bit more specific type hitting situations and, and see if we can get a little better in that area. Well, Jim, congratulations to you after running through so many managers here on the north side of Chicago. It's a pleasure to know that you'll be back for a couple more years. Your staff will be back for next year. You guys certainly deserve it. It's been a very good year for the Chicago Cubs. And stay with us because right now we'll have a look at the scores from yesterday. And then we'll be back with a look at the starting pitchers coming up after these messages. of portrait studios telling me what portraits to buy so i chose sears i pick my favorite portraits in my custom session and i can get a color proof instantly with their new portrait preview system plus at sears i only buy the portraits i want i decide how many i want and what sizes so there's no sales pressure you can choose any portrait studio but who'll give you choices like that get the portraits you want from the people you trust at the new sears portrait studio Rice Krispie Treats? Melba made them. Melba made them? Well, she's a hard-working gal. Took her 10 minutes. Said they were low-fat. Low-fat? Mm -hmm. Which one do you care about? Fat. How do you think I keep my girlish figure? Kellogg's Rice Krispies <laughs> Treats? What other cereals sound so good? <laughs> Kellogg's Halloween Rice Krispies in special yellow and orange colors can make your Halloween a scream. On the mound for the Astros today is Doug Drabeck. The Cubs are very familiar with him. They've seen him for many years, and they know he's a pretty tough customer. Steve Traxel goes to the mound for the Cubs, and the wind is howling out once again. Yesterday, the Astros used the long ball. Today, Traxel is going to have to combat that because it's going to be tough to keep the ball in the ballpark. So today is the swan song. It's the coup de grace. It's the final game. It's see you next year. One of those things for the Cubs, but you know what? They took it a long way this year. They took it to the second last day of the season with a chance to win the wild card race. And you'd have to consider it was quite a year, all things said and done. So we'll see you for the leadoff man next year. Just 180 some days to go. It's going to be exciting, so stay tuned for baseball. Guests on the leadoff man receive a Zenith 13-inch remote control color TV from Zenith and your local Zenith dealers. At Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. And a handsome Esquire watch. Esquire brings a new level of quality to watches with prices as appealing as their looks. From Henry K. Jewelers, 3rd Level Water Tower Play, Chicago. Great morning. Bagel? Look, isn't that... It is. So smooth. So irresistible. Excuse me, could I? Anything for a fan. 
Philly cream cheese. How would you like this made up? For a hundred calories, who can resist? A bagel without Philly is just plain silly. You know, I never really learned my school fight song. Oh, I know it. Hell, alma mater. War, eagle, Philly, ain't so true. Give me some music. They lit up scoreboards from Ann Arbor to Tuscaloosa. They were warriors of Saturday afternoon. Well, the son of no sir. No. On the victory strike up the band. Now relive it all with Burger King Legends of College Football Cups. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Obviously, a wiser choice than a fight song album. They're all true blue. We'll all stick together. Hey, Cub fans, keep your eye on the ball. Every time a Cub player hits a homer at Wrigley Field, you could be a winner. It's the Southwest Airlines How Far Did It Fly Home Run Contest. After every Cub homer, write down the distance along with your name, age, address, and phone number and send it to WGN-TV. We'll choose 10 winners who will each receive a pair of round trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. For every Cub homer, ask yourself, how far did it fly? From Southwest, the low fare airline at Midway Airport. Kirk finally gets his dream date with Elizabeth. Sort of. If you kiss me, I'll have to hurt you. Kirk! Tonight at 7 on WGN Channel 9. Leadoff Man has been brought to you by your friendly Dodge dealers. Check out Dodge's lineup of the 95 cars and trucks. The following is a presentation of WGN Sports. It's a rough day on the lake. And it's been a rough day for Terry Collins, the manager of the Astros, who nevertheless could tie for the wild card berth today. But it's been a great day for Jim Riegelman. His contract has been extended through 1997. Stay with us for exciting baseball at Wrigley Field. <laughs> Chicago Cubs Baseball on WGN. Brought to you by Beachwood Aged Budweiser. It's always been true, this Bud's for you. Your local Buick dealers, the new symbol for quality in America. Your Chicagoland Builder Square, the official home improvement center of the Chicago Cubs. Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. Aflac, insuring over 38 million people worldwide. And by Southwest Airlines at convenient Midway Airport, the official airline of WGN-TV Sports. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. You're a lad. You could say we were out for blood, and we found it. An icy cold corner with an eye for detail. The murder's here, a copycat killing. Richard Berge. I'm good with guns. Quick fire and hot shot. I was damn near disassembled, Dave. He's a wolf in cop's clothing. Very kinky. But then, she's no angel either. Do you mind covering up your face? From the producers of Magnum P.I. Freeze! One West, Waikiki. Tonight at 10.30 on WGN Channel 9. On Cleghorn, Akilah's going to a dance and she doesn't want mom cramping her style. You never wanted me to take you to any of your dances either. You're eating this up, aren't you? Well, it might be a bit unchristian like to say this, but yes! Then, on first time out, Nathan's writing the book of love. Why are you hanging around here? Research. See, the protagonist in my book is a guy that knows everything there is to know about women. So we can rule out autobiography? <laughs> Tonight at 8 on WGN Channel 9. What do you get when you fly the low fare airline? Fun fares. Well, you waited so long for a fare to get so nice and low. Get out. Now you really should fly. Light up the night. Southwest Airlines' new fun fares are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just Why for the fun of it.
Come on again, everybody. Harry Carey with Steve Stone and Tom Brenneman. A beautiful day for baseball. And this, the final game of the season. Boy, oh boy, the Cubs made quite a run out of it. But Houston today has everything at stake so far as becoming a wild card team. Well, Harry, you're right about that. And for the Cubs, the air kind of out of the balloon. They made a great run at it. They won eight games in a row, eight must games in a row. But yesterday they lost a tough one. Colorado won. They would have been eliminated anyway. But for Houston today, they've got to win to have any chance at the wild card race. And then they have to look at Colorado. And if Colorado loses, Harry, they'll play a one game playoff tomorrow. So a very big game for the Houston Astros today. And all the excitement, if there is any in the American League, involves the Angels and the Yankees. With Seattle one game ahead in the uh, race for the title, California only one behind them, and California but one behind the Yankees for the wild card. Well, California really has to have a lot of help. The Yankees have to lose, Seattle has to lose, and then California has a shot, Harry. And also, congratulations to the Los Angeles Dodgers by winning yesterday. They won the West, and so they will go into postseason play. You know, we're, uh, I'm divided in, uh, in emotion between the, uh, uh, the uh, Angels and Seattle. I'd love to see Lupinella win. By the way, we're ready now to go with our national anthem. And join Wayne and Kathleen Mesmer as they honor the United States with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Look who's here, Herschel Walker and Tony Dorsett, two of the best college football running backs I ever saw. I'll bet you they're swapping some pretty good football stories. Next time, I'm telling you, Tony, right profile. Really, Hers? I've always favored my left, man. Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Touchdown! You think next time we should wear the helmets? In my case, the helmet is definitely on. the official fuel of NASCAR in a slightly tamer version for your car. Wait! Wait! Before you move on, sure, mine isn't as pretty as hers, but it's beautiful on the inside. Sure, it's a little burnt, but mm, more fiber. It's a little thinner, but you can fit more in the oven. I, I mean, anyone can take the pits out, but I use the whole cherry. It keeps guests alert. Need a new way to win? Try new Super 7 Bingo. There's still a $10,000 top prize, but now when you form sevens, you can also win big. New Super 7 Bingo from the Illinois Lottery. Go ahead. Break off a chunk. <laughs> Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey with Steve Stone and Tom Brenneman. Here are the starting lineups. Terry Collins, the Houston manager, has Kangelosi leading off. Biggio at second. Bagwell at first. Derek May in the cleanup spot playing left. Eusebio the catcher. Maggot in the third. Mike Sims in right. Guterres at shortstop. 
and Doug Drayback, the pitcher. He's won 10 and he's lost nine. The Pepsi Cub defense is a follow. Gonzalez, McRae, and Sosa in the outfield. Johnston, Dunson, Hernandez, and Grace. In the infield, Parent, Mark Parent doing the catching. And Steve Traxel will be on the mound. The umpires are at Montague, the plate. Greg Bonet at first, Charlie Williams at second, and John McSherry at third. You know, the, uh, the fans, the Cubs have been doing this several times during the course of the homestand where a fan comes out for each man at his position and gets his autograph. They're still giving the one in left field from Louis Gonzalez. And uh, that's a nice little gimmick. And we're ready to play baseball on a beautiful day. Steve Traxel has his work cut out for him today because he faced Houston back on May 3rd at Wrigley Field. He went four and two thirds innings, give up eight hits and four earned runs. They lost that one 11 to two. Over the course of his career, he's been a little better. He's one and two, an ERA of 386. Now the wind is blowing out and it's very brisk today. It's blowing out at 21 miles an hour straight over the center field wall, but it has wind gusts up to 31 miles an hour and Traxel's given up 22 home runs this year. So yesterday the Astros took advantage of the wind and they hit the ball out of the ballpark consistently and Traxel's going to have to stop them from doing that today. The Astros have a very fast team. They will try to run every chance they get and this is a must win for them although it means very little to the Cubs. Well it, the Cubs would have the satisfaction of winning nine out of 10 on the last homestand of the year. Boy, what a perfect day. We're going to have a good crowd on hand. The Cubs will go well over the 1,900,000 mark in home attendance. And when you consider the troubled state of baseball, the short season, that's quite an accomplishment. Johnny Angelosi will be leaving it off. Angelosi led off yesterday with a base on balls, later scored after Biggio and Bagwell hit back to back home runs. Hey, Rhino. Ryan Sandberg, as we promised you yesterday, is here at the ballpark. Hey, get the doing? uniform on, will you? Hey, last day. <laughs> it's been a great home stand for, yeah, it's for exciting, a change. Exciting baseball. And, uh, I've seen the last uh, three games, and it's been exciting to get, who, get a who, taste of the, the winning. Who are the youngsters you were surrounded by yesterday? I got a whole group of them here. Uh -huh. um, uh, just the family that came out from uh, Phoenix to uh, uh, take part in Fan Appreciation Weekend. Uh, it's been a good weekend. Uh, all right, we're ready to go. And John Angelosi, you remember this little fella? Oh, yeah. We've got to throw strikes to this guy. <laughs> There's a fastball low and outside. Rhino, you see the wind blowing out at 21 to 31 miles an hour. It almost makes you ready to get a bat and get in there, doesn't it? It sure does. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice temperatures for this time of the year here, and uh, to see the wind blowing out. Here's a line drive. Louis Gonzalez oh, nice. makes the catch, sliding into the catch as it were, and there's one, of one man out. Gonzalez comes in and catches the ball over his head while sliding. Unusual style, but very effective. With the wind blowing out like this, you could probably hit 40 home runs in one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but, uh, you know, you get the ball up on a day like this, and uh, it'll go to all fields. Here's a little guy that's uh, Craig Biggio. He's just outstanding. Uh, I think he's had one as he had. Nine out of 15 in the series with a couple of home runs included. He's a heck of a ball player. He sure is, and uh, he's really putting it all together. You know, he's he's in his prime of his career and uh, probably the best second baseman in the National League at this time. And you know that he used to be a catcher when you were playing, and he was catching. Yeah, it's amazing. It really is uh, to make that adjustment and to, to go from behind the plate and go out and play uh, 
a tough position like uh, middle infield uh, second base. Uh, he's done a good job. Certainly. Yeah. Aren't you glad that somebody didn't get the idea of putting you behind the plate? <laughs> 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 Base hit for Biggio. Line drive left field. That one base hit's going to ensure that Biggio winds up this season at least with a 300 batting average. And that's something, of course, that every player strives for and well deserved by Biggio, who certainly has closed with a rush. Rhino, I guess uh, you're kind of on a public uh, relations uh, tour, and no doubt you'll deal in the uh, Cubs convention in January. Absolutely. Uh, that's something that, that uh, I think is an outstanding opportunity for all the fans to uh, really start the, uh, the new season, and uh, it's January 19th, uh, 20th, and 21st this year, and just a good, a good opportunity to come out and see uh, uh, the Cubs players, the current and uh, old players. It's a, you know, it's really an amazing thing. They have about 15, 18,000 people. They come from all over the country for that convention. It is amazing, and uh, you know, it just, it just shows you the, the support that the Cubs have and uh, the great organization that, that is here uh, at Wrigley Field with the Cubs. And uh, I know that the players really appreciate the fans, and and you know, to see the fans come out uh, these last few games and really support the the ball club. They made a difference in in that game uh, two days ago where they uh, really showed the support in the ninth inning and, and got them going. You know that's the thing that was a mystery to me about the inability to win at home because of the fans. These are the greatest baseball fans in the world and that's what made it mystifying trying to figure out why they couldn't win. Now they're proving they can win. They won eight out of nine shooting for nine out of ten. And that's that's a good note to uh, to end this season this year and uh, to take that on into next season. Rhino, let me ask you, if you had, if you were able or had to say to pick one, I'm not going to say one, one pitcher, I know you'd say Greg Vanek, we all would, but if you had one player or one position, let's say, that you would like to improve, what would it be? Well, uh, you know, I think that they've, they've, uh, they've done a good job in, in, um, Making Brian McRae the center field and making that real solid. That's definitely uh, a big plus for the Cubs. Uh, Bagwell. Nice, oh, nice play. play. Johnson over the second for one, over the first for two. Hey, that looked like Ryan Sandberg playing third base. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Boy, he made a sparkling play as you saw to his left, 5 4 3. We go in the bottom of the first, no score. your most valued possessions without spending a fortune get hip to the square builder square has home security all locked up for openers there's dead bolts and lock sets of every kind there's smoke detectors and all types of fire extinguishers and security lighting of every description get a great square deal price this week on the door club for maximum security in your home it's easy to install on only 4614 builder square we'll get you squared away this, this is, is LA. LA. We have tons of friends. This is Posh. This is my wife. This is my neighbor. This is my son-in-law. This is my very good neighbor. This is my number two daughter. Hi. This is my neighbor, John. When I found out that I needed surgery, it was kind of a shock. Luckily, it turned out. Aflac really helped protect our savings. Just really took the worry away. Aflac covers the unexpected cost of getting better so you can get on with life. John is definitely not a dancer. Harry Carey back to Rigby Field. Here is Jim Riggleman's Cubs lineup presented by Pepsi and McRae in center, Johnson at third, Grace at first. Sosa in right, Gonzalez in left, Dunstan at short. Parent to catcher, Mark Parent. Hernandez at second, and Traxel is on the mound. The 
defense for the Astros, May, Pangelosi, and Simmons in the outfield. Magadan, Gutierrez, Vigio, and Bagwell are on the infield. Eusebio catching and Drebeck pitching. You know, we saw the Spartan play, and I said it looked like you playing third base. You were naturally a shortstop, and they shifted you to third. That doesn't sound like a very difficult transition. But from third to second, which you start at for almost 10 years, I guess, is a little bit different of a change. Yes, it really is. Uh, the other side of the infield, uh, the bat the, or the ball uh, definitely comes off, off the bat differently from that side. And and uh, a lot of responsibilities at second base, uh, the cutoffs and relays and the, uh, the covering uh, second on steals. A uh, lot to think about out there. Uh, I think I really didn't start to real, really feel comfortable till after, after uh, I had one full year under my belt, and then uh, I felt comfortable out there. But it took some time. All right, now you've had a little more than one complete year under your belt to retire, right? There's a drive going to be caught on right field off the bat of uh, Brian McRae. Now you've had a little time. You sat back. You reflected. You enjoyed the family. You got a new bride. Would you like to be a manager? Uh, that's something that I've never really thought about. Um, you know, you have, I think today, this is a day and age where the players got to feel some affinity for the manager. So the closer to their age you are, the better you have a chance to get along. And I don't think managing anymore is such a brain trust that they have to be a rocket scientist. You got to make players want to play for you. You could do that the, like that. Well, you know, that, that could be something that's, that's further down the road for me. Uh, you know, right now I, I'm uh, enjoying the time with my kids. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if people really uh, know or appreciate the time that a manager puts in at the ballpark. And, uh, and with all the traveling and all that's, in, that's, uh, that's involved, uh, I don't know if, if, if I would do that in the near future. But, uh, you know, maybe somewhere down the road uh, it's a possibility. I would imagine that somewhere down the road there are going to be a few clubs contact you right <laughs> you wouldn't be surprised if they did well we'll see I don't know uh, I'm, I'm keeping the doors open uh, well here's what you heard at first folks I <laughs> uh, went out and here is Hojo a base hit you know Rhino away he may try for a second nope he changed his mind as the base hit was fumbled and right by Mike Sim. So, you know, this Hojo has done, he's still a good ball player. And he, uh, and he gets on base a lot. And he's a threat at the plate. And he can run and steal bases. You would think there might be a spot for him on the ball club more regularly. He can still swing the bat, no question about it. Uh, you know, I know that uh, we tried to get him over here quite a while ago when he was with the Mets. And, uh, uh, you know, if you put him in the lineup uh, every day uh, for a full season, I think he'd do some damage here at Wrigley Field. He's, he's been doing a good job and has a little bit different uh, type of a role, uh, you know, coming off the bench uh, every now and then the way that he's done most of the season this year. And that's, that's tough to do. But uh, you give him several at bats here, and I, th I think that he'd perform good. There's a fellow who has had a fine year, Mark Grace. He's hit 50 doubles. The only that's the only man that do it since Pete Rhodes about 20 years ago. Pitch in the dirt. Boy oh boy. You know uh, and the Astros still have a shot at the wild card today. Yeah this is definitely a must win for them and uh, they'll be watching the scoreboard to see how Colorado yeah. Colorado, Colorado does and see if there's a one game playoff tomorrow or not. One ball, one strike on Grace. Runner at first, one out. Drayback, worlds and thrills. You, re you remember Drayback. Uh, how's he pitch? What's he got? Well, uh, you know, he's just a, a smart pitcher out there, and uh, he'll work the fastball inside and outside, and uh, good breaking ball and change of speeds. But uh, he adjusts uh, with the hitters up there, and, and uh, very smart out there on the mound. I, I have some people here I think you might recognize. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the group here from yeah. Phoenix. You want to you want to chat with your wife? <laughs> I, I can tell them about the ball game later. How are you, dear? 
Good to see you. Who are all the youngsters? Justin, Steven, Adrian, and BR. We're missing one. We're missing Lindsay. She's at home at a dance performance. Is he uh, is he arguing with you a lot? Yeah, or does he always do what you tell him to do? Um, not as quiet as everybody thinks. <laughs> <laughs> He's like all the time. Well, let's see. Yeah, he's not trying to steal. He was thrown out. And there's the whole family there. Well, Rhino, there's enough there to keep you busy. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of fun together. We sure do. Well, you have to go out and earn a living now, too, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm working today here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's Grace. Two out, nobody on. Can you come over here a moment, dear? Now, sit right on my lap and we'll talk to Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. When did you meet Rhino? I met Ryan about seven years ago. Our girls were in kindergarten together. So I've known him for a long time. We were friends for years and years. Grace bounces out. That takes the care of the uh, Cubs bottle and first. We'll be back in a moment with no score. So the Nittany Lions and the Fighting Irish have given us another great college football game. And here are two tired generals looking for each other at midfield. It's a break, Joe. Yeah, I know. The tie's too much. It's nice, but maybe next time something in a crew neck. How uh, do you think that'd be too casual? Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Look, Joe, it's not the end of the world. Next cup, think pastels. What you got there? Cats, man. Look like stamps to me. You ain't never heard of Uvi Blake? Uvi is cool. Well, he's a stamp now, see? Stamp is square, man. You ain't no square. Oh, man. Same as Bird or Satchmo. Satchmo, too? Yeah. Jazz musician stamps at your post office. I bet Satchmo ain't gonna dig nobody licking the back of his head. <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> These stamps are for saving, not for licking. Call for catalog. Well, here is a Ryan Sandberg complete family right here. And there they are. I don't know if we can get them all in the, uh, on the screw. Yeah, Arnie's a master at this. <laughs> all right, are you a ball player? Yeah. Are you a second baseman? No. What are you? Center fielder. Oh, what's your name? Justin. Justin, center fielder. Yeah. Are you going to be a switch hitter? So they, oh, you don't have to worry about that curveball. <laughs> I hope. Okay. <laughs> What's your name, son? Steven. Steven? You a ball player, too? What do you play? <laughs> oh, naturally. <laughs> Has your dad taught you anything about how to play the game yet? Sort of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how about dear? How about you? You're not going to be a ball player, are you? I play softball. Softball. Well, that's big as a girl, right? <laughs> and you, young man? I play second base and third base. And you uh, are pulling for Penn State? Kind of. You got upset <laughs> yesterday, right? Yeah. All right, thank you very much. All right, Harry. And Steve. continue and happiness to you. Thank okay. you very much. All right. Thanks, Harry. Okay, Rhino. See you all later. All right. Well, one inning is over. No score. Take two. We're in the top of the second. There's a drive off Derek's bat. Derek made lifts a high fly ball, and Gonzalez makes the catch. One away. May has been tough in this series. He's hitting 289 with seven homers, 40 RBIs, and he hasn't been with them very long. He's only been with them about 77 games. He's only been the bat 200 times. One out. And here's Eusebio. Tony Eusebio. One out. Strike call. This guy looks like a good hitter. 
hitting 302. Burley man, Eusebio. Tony. Ground ball, this ought to be easy. Hernandez over to first. Two gone. And here's Dave Magadan hitting 308, two homers, 51 RBI. Colorado will start around 2 o'clock Chicago time. Strike call. So Scott Service and Todd Zeal, both with the day off today, both additions during the course of this season, along with Louis Gonzalez. Lolo. The Angels in the American League, they could tie for the division leadership today. There's a long drive. Center field might be out of here, off the wall. And Magadan doubled off the center field wall. Magadan came at eyelash from hitting his third home run of the year. And that shows you anything up in the wind today is dangerous. Traxel normally throwing a lot of fly balls. This one carrying well over the head of McCray. He doesn't get trapped too close to the wall, which is the key here. And he makes a very good play, but Magan coasts into second base. So we'll watch the swing. You look at the location of this one. It's up and out over the plate, and Magadan crushes it. And here's a guy you better worry a little bit about, too. Mike Simmons, young outfielder. He's hit nine home runs. Terry okay. Collins wanted him in the lineup today because of his ability to hit the ball in the air and his enormous strength. And you don't need much to get it out of here this afternoon. He's been to bat 117 times with nine home runs. First pitch of strike call. Mike Simmons. Low and outside. Jesse Barfield out of Joliet. Fine outfielder for years now, a coach with the Astros. Boy, he gets a good cut to Sims, but he fouls it off. Boy, oh boy, Cleveland playing its last game of the season. Six in the first, five in the second. Their opponent, Kansas City, four in the third. It's 11 to four at the end of three in Cleveland. And Albert, don't call me Joe, Bell, who hit his 50th home run of the year last night, has not yet connected. Cleveland trying to win their 100th game of the year and what an accomplishment that would be in a 144 game season. Two balls two strikes 56 games over 500 they've got a 29 game lead on Kansas City and they've made a shambles of what was supposed to be a pretty good race in the AL Central. Atlanta and New York no score at the end of five Boy, those Mets. They've really been pitching and playing some baseball. Inside, ball three. And Traxel knows he's got to keep the ball down. The wind blowing strongly out. Three balls, two strikes. him out off speed pitch over the outside corner one hit one left we're going to bottom of the second no score 
Kirk finally escapes the kids and goes on a Cinderella dream date. All those times I told you to get lost, what I really meant was this. But when the clock strikes 12, it's Pumpkin City. If you kiss me, I'll have to hurt you. Kirk! Then, Simon interviews his brother for a job. Describe yourself in five words. I'm about to smack you. Perfect! There's just one catch. I'm the Muffin Girl. Simon, tonight at 7 on WGN Channel 9. WGN is proud to salute Chicago's Latino community during Hispanic Heritage Month. <laughs> there is probably the last time this year that Arnie Harris will find a hat to show you that looks something like that. Here is Sosa. Gonna be trying to get to 120 runs batted in. He's too shy of that. Looking for his 37th home run of the year. And what a year it's been for him. Grayback. One ball, no strikes. Outside. Over the course of Drebeck's career, he's had a good time of it with the Cubs. 15 and 10 with a 3.30 ERA. But this year, the Cubs have handled him very well. In two games, he only lasted eight and a third innings, and the Cubs have touched him up for 16 hits and nine runs. High pop foul. Everybody chasing it. I don't think. Hey, a great catch. A sliding catch by Mike Sims. Nice play. It was one of the few times you'd want a sliding catch when you're going over toward the stands. This is a fair ball, and he makes the play and makes sure that he doesn't get injured. The wind just takes this ball that was well fouled, pushing it into fair territory, and that would have been at least a double if not for the heroics of Mike Sims. Bob Green, the very talented columnist of the Chicago Tribune, has a fine column today worth reading by for everybody one out nobody on and here is Gonzalez the child sign yeah well can't win them all buddy other boys your Notre Dame man wear the shirt one ball no strength think of the hell of the football they might have one yesterday they kept turning it over to Ohio State and every time they did Ohio State scored which is a sign of a fine football team Jim McGrath and McGrath Buick on hand as is Fred Tuck of Tuck Buick and Mike Cook of Bill Cook Buick on the finale a beautiful day in Chicago and there is who's hot in the National League former Cub Jose Vizcaino Barry Bonds Louis Gonzalez and as hot as just about anybody around of late. Well, my good friend Abraham with the Chicago Cubs Little League Champion from Humboldt Park. Two times they've won the championship at Humboldt Park in the Little League. They call themselves the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> He's watching the TV set and he sees himself 
Whoa, and hot smash. Good play by Biggio. A one-handed stab to his left. And his father is telling him that he is on WGN and wave to the oh, folks. Look at that. Is he proud? Hi, buddy. How are you? Let's see. Can you wave at me? Can you wave at me? <laughs> Two out. Nobody on. Here's Dunstan. <laughs> Dunstan takes a curb in there. Boy, oh boy, here's some sad news. Our good friend Mel Green. I know Mel's got a world of friends all over Chicago. He was connected with firms in Las Vegas before retiring living here also had a home in Palm Springs here's a high fly ball the wind will blow it right to Sims and it's one two three at the end of two no score what do you get when you fly the low fare airline fun fares well, you've waited so long for a fare to get so nice and low down. Now you really should fly. Light up the night. Southwest Airlines' new fun fares are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just Why to the front of it. Come along with us, because we got a lot of things to do now. Now you really should fly. And you have fun, 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 fun. Southwest on a fun fare today. Join Harry Carey, Ryan Sandberg, Billy Williams, Ernie Banks, Fergie Jenkins, Ryan McRae, and many more at the 11th Annual Cubs Convention, January 19th through the 21st at the Chicago Hilton and Towers, sponsored by Pepsi. Enjoy autograph and photo sessions, hitting and pitching clinics, and much more. All proceeds benefit Cubs Care. For more information, call 312-404-CUBS. We'll see you at the Cubs Convention. Throughout October at Builder Square, you can buy a First Alert Smoke Detector 2-pack and then help meet a very special need in your community when you leave one of the smoke detectors with us. Your local fire department will distribute the smoke detectors to families in need. And as a thank you for your donation, you'll receive a coupon good for 10% off your next purchase at Builder Square. Of course, chances are good that you'll be saving a whole lot more. Carey and Steve Stone as we go into the top of the third with Gutierrez leading it off. Gutierrez has really had a good run at it against the Cubs. He had his struggles this year but in the couple of series that the Cubs have played the Astros here the last two weeks of the season. He has really been a force offensively and he's hit the ball to right field and he's pulled it down the line so he's hit the ball all over. Gutierrez waiting here's the pitch. Curveball outside. Getting back to Mel Green. He was a member I think of the Standard Club. I think he spent his days playing gin rum and going with all his friends over there. Man of just handsome gray hair, full head of it. I think that's the first thing you always notice about him. And I'm sure sorry to hear that he passed away last night. My wife just called me to give me the message. He is survived by his wife, Irene, and children that whose names I don't have at the moment. They sit maybe the wind keeps in the nose gets away from Sammy trying for a second good terrace and he makes it. 
a double for Gutierrez. Sosa trying for a shoestring catch. Gutierrez continues his hot hitting against the Cubs. Good effort by Sosa. He has the ball drop right in front of his glove and get by him. And Gutierrez with his decent speed in at second base. Just his sixth double of the year. And now Doug Drabeck, who's an excellent hitter, by the way, as well as a very good butter, will have a world of possibilities. They're in at the corners with Johnson and Grace. But Drabeck hitting 237, one of the better hitters around. They're expecting him to bunt. He bunts, fouls, strike one. You know the Cubs in Houston are pretty close on almost every classification. In team batting, Houston is second with a 274 team average. The Cubs are sixth with 264. But would you believe this? The Cubs have hit 157 home runs. Houston only 105. Boy, oh boy. Seeing this series, you never believe that. Well, one of the things that Houston does have over the Cubs, Harry, is the fact that they've got such great team speed. Mm -hmm. And Terry Collins knows that although they don't have a lot of power in their lineup on a daily basis, they've got to run themselves into an offense. And that's generally what he tries to do. Yeah, they got about 70 more stolen bases than the Cubs. The two teams are practically tied in club fielding. In fact, they are tied in club fielding. Drabeck, Drabeck. Strike call. Two balls, two strikes. We'd like to congratulate Jim Riggleman. It was announced before the game by general manager Ed Lynch that Riggleman's contract was extended through the 1997 season and his entire coaching staff will come back for the 96 season. And certainly it's a well-earned honor for all of these people who worked so very hard to put together this Cub team. And they've done a whale of a job this year. Here he tried to bunt with two strikes. And he tried to bump what would have been ball three about high high. So he's out on the strikes. One out. From the Southwest Plainview camera, we'll take a look at Drabeck trying to jab at this one. And that's not particularly good bunting technique. It cost him a strikeout. Here's a man with eight sacrifices this year, so you know that he knows how to bunt. He just didn't look particularly good on that sequence. Here's John and Ken Gelosi. He had a good day yesterday after going 0 for 7 earlier in the seri series. <clears throat> Let's pause for identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN TV, Chicago. Ken Gelosi drove in two runs and then yesterday's 98 victory. <clears throat> one ball, one strike. Normally you play Ken Gelosi very shallow and you play him toward left and left center field. With that in mind, McCray is over a couple of steps. Gonzalez in close in left field and toward the line. Right-handed Ken Gelosi can hit the ball out of the park on occasion. Left-handed, he usually tries to slap at the ball. <clears throat> Here's a pitch strike call. Jim Donald wants to send greetings and wish for a quick recovery to Bob Greeby. One ball, two strikes. Guterres, a long lead. A little bit outside, two and two. Ken Jalosi, very fast. Johnson playing him deep now with two strikes at third. Two, two pitch. Ball three. 
Angelosi's had a remarkable on base percentage at 456. Let's see the runs scored. The Rockies on top, the Astros third behind the Reds. Three and two. Ball four. Cub fans, it's a 1996 Cubs convention, January 18th through the 21st at the Chicago Hilton and Tower, sponsored by Pepsi. Brian Sandberg, Rick Sutcliffe, Bill Buckner, Ernie Banks, Ron Sano, Brian McRae, Frank Castillo, and many more will be in attendance, and you can too. Be sure to inquire about our special Sluggers VIP package, offering a private pre-convention engagement with the Cubs players. For more information, call 312-404-CUBS. Two on, one out. And here's that man again, Biggio. Curse, strike call. Biggio now 10 out of 16 in this four game series. Gutierrez can run, and so can Cangelosi, and so you have to watch him very closely, and nobody's paying attention to him at second. Tracks the world's. Showing attention to him. Trying to keep him close. Hernandez nowhere near him. Dunson at the shortstop positions. He swings, fouls him. A fan, young fan, I think, caught the ball. Here's the Aflac trivia question. Which current baseball executive scored baseballs 100,000, 1 million run? Oh, I know. I'm not going to tell you that. That's such a cinch. We both know that one, Harry. So we'll disqualify yeah. ourselves on the final day and let the fans at home try to figure it out. Oh, and two. <clears throat> Inside. Nice play by Mark Parent behind the plate, saving a wild pitch. And now I would think that Traxel should pay some attention at second base to Gutierrez because he's gotten a very big lead. Dunstan playing in the hole. Hernandez not close. And if you're not careful, he's getting just about ready to take off. One ball, two strikes. Watch them. They hold. There's a fly ball. Going to be caught. McRae has it. Throw back to second base as Gutierrez advances the third after the catch. And here is Bagwell. Bagwell. Hitting 291 with 20 homers, 86 RBI. He hit a double play on a fine stab by Hojo around the horn. 5 4 3. He had a good cut, but miss. But the more I see BGO and Bagwell, the more I wonder how anybody could ever throw him a fastball anywhere unless they threw it behind them. Well, I think Houston is trying to figure out what this season would have looked like had Bagwell and Derek Bell been yeah. healthy the entire season. There wouldn't be much of a wild card race, and this team might have put some pressure on Cincinnati. Because things were looking very well for them when Bagwell went down. And in his absence, they went 9 and 21. Houston right now is only nine behind the division winner, Cincinnati. The Cubs are 11 behind. Two out, two on. Bagwell hitting 500 in this series. Boy, 
Look at the way he turns on the ball. But don't let it fool you. He can hit the ball as far to the opposite field as his swing would indicate it would go to left field. Well, now you've set him up with the high fastball. It's a real good time to use either a breaking ball in the dirt low and away or that fork ball if you can get it low and away out of the zone. But then Perrin's going to have to block it if it is in the dirt. And that's where you'd probably like to go on Bagwell here. There's a high fly ball. The wind may take this one back, back, back. And McCray catches it. That's the Ivy. To retire the side. One hit, no runs, two men left. We go in the bottom of the third, no score. This is LA. We have tons of friends. This is Tosh. This is my wife. This is my neighbor. This is my son-in-law. This is my very good neighbor. This is my number two daughter. Hi. This is my neighbor, John. When I found out that I needed surgery, it was kind of a shock. Luckily, it turned out. Aflac really helped protect our savings. Just really took the worry away. Aflac covers the unexpected cost of getting better so you can get on with life. Don is definitely not a dancer. <laughs> Bud. 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 Why? Bud. Why? Bud. Why? Throughout October at Builder Square, you can buy a First Alert Smoke Detector 2-pack and then help meet a very special need in your community when you leave one of the smoke detectors with us. Your local fire department will distribute the smoke detectors to families in need. And as a thank you for your donation, you'll receive a coupon good for 10% off your next purchase at Builder Square. Of course, chances are good that you'll be saving a whole lot more. Ellen's daughter's got a date, and Ellen doesn't like how it sounds. Take this. This is what Mama uses. Craig Lauren, Janetta Data, and WGN Channel 9. Kirk finally gets his dream date with Elizabeth. Sort of. If you kiss me, I'll have to hurt you. Kirk, Janetta 7 on WGN Channel 9. Harry Carey with Steve Stone and Tom Brenneman will be along at the end of this half inning. As Mark Parent walks up to the plate, no score. Jeff Bangwell gave the crowd a heartbreak for the, an infinitesimal part of a second with his long drive that Brian McRae caught up against the ivy of the center field wall. There's the pitch inside Parent who's hit 18 homers this year, three for the Cubs. It's only been one of them about two weeks. 15 with the Pirates. Curveball in there, beauty. The count is evened up. No score in this ballgame. Pittsburgh leaving St. Louis 6-0. Swings and fouls it off. The Cubs will go over the 1,900,000 mark in home attendance today. Young Alan Bennis, the brother, both coming from Evansville, Indiana, struck out 10 last night and won his first major league victory. Two balls, two strikes. The Dodgers won the West Division title. A, a shirt of a tie, at least. There's a pitch low. 
No, they won it outright, Harry, because even if they do tie in head-to-head -head competition against Colorado, they have a nine-to-four advantage, so they are winners oh, yeah, that's in the win. Right. Colorado only a game behind them right now. Ball four, parent luck. Boy, you don't know about these things, but I would say one, one thing I'd have to state for sure, and that is that Mark Parent will be a member of the Cubs in 1996. Gives them a good number two catcher and a guy with a lot of pop in his bat. And when he gets up there, they, they got a fear of the long ball. Here's Hernandez. Her ball in there, strike call. Well, the wind is really starting to gust now, and if you can get one up in the air at this point, it is going to go out of the ballpark. Hernandez. When he hits one, he doesn't even need the wind. But it's nice to have. Bouncing ball over the third baseman's head. Yay! Derek May lets the ball get behind him here. The first run of the ball game. Derek May in left field and Hernandez winds up the third base. It's a single. The run scores on the air, and Hernandez goes to third on the air also. And the Cubs are trying to end the hopes of the Houston Astros, and with plays like this, the Astros are self-destructing. They had a very tough day yesterday, but scored enough runs to work through three errors. This is a particularly costly error because it takes the Astros out of double play consideration, and brings the infield in at all four positions for Traxel who's a very good hitter. One to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Bottom of the third infield in. Nobody out. Base hit! Another run is in. Traxel hit the first pitch hard in the left. And the Cubs lead two to nothing. Steve Traxel drives in a run, giving himself a little cushion there. And Traxel has done quite a job swinging the bat. That's the fourth run driven in, improving on his 250 batting average. And he takes it right through a drawn in infield. And when you have to move the infield in, it certainly improves the chances of any hitter, including a good hitting pitcher. Traxel, that was his 13th hit. He's second now to Kevin Foster. Hey, there's Spencer. What's that kid's last name? I think he's related to uh, Jim Donald. His first name is Spencer. All right, here now is Brian McGrave bunning foul, trying to sacrifice. The Cubs shooting for nine out of ten. Pitch a little bit inside. The Cubs shooting for the 74th victory of the year. That's 25 victories more than a year ago. How about that? Bouncing shot in the center field. Here's a runner. Now the center fielder fumbles the ball. And they advance another base. The air is on Candelosi. A single. When the ball gets through Candelosi, he fumbles it. The runners advance to second and third. Well, first, Derek May makes his second error of the year. And now John Candelosi commits his fifth error of the year. Traxel was content to stay at second base until he saw this. Angelosi booting the ball, putting runners on second and third. 
and the Astros in a must win situation self destructing defensively. Well Stan Lemire out there. The pitching coach. You know the Cubs have scored a league high 12 shutouts. One more than Atlanta and Los Angeles. How about that? Cubs have a chance to lead the league and shut out for the first time since 1938. And they got a shot at that. Today they lead two to nothing, nobody out. Runners at second and third. And here is Hojo. Into the dirt. Nice save by Eusebio. Boy, McGray has had such a great year. Runners at second and third. Nobody out. Mark Grace would be next. Line drive, base hit, one run in, the other run coming around third. Here's the throw to the play, cut off. Wow. I'm glad it was cut off. You never know. And it is now four to nothing, and Hojo is two out of two. Oh, it drives in runs 21 and 22, and since Johnson has got an opportunity to play a little more, he's done quite a job. Cubs lead by four. So, with a four run lead, still nobody out. Activity in the bullpen for the Astros. Woo, we had a cut. Brayback. The last time he faced the Cubs, he was shellacked. They got about 16 hits off of him, as I recall. Bit outside. Grace is six in the National League in hitting with his 324 batting average. There's a drive way back. It might be. It could be. His 16th home run of the year. He breaks his career high, establishing a new one. Six to nothing. RBI's 91 and 92, and Mark Grace left nothing to the imagination that time. He took it way back. Mike Sims and John Cangelosi just looked up at the hanging curveball, and Grace gets every bit of this one. So the Cubs have put six on the board. That ball almost landed on Sheffield Avenue. It hit the back screen in right field. Grace being congratulated. Boy, he's had an outstanding year. Now I wonder who he blew that kiss to. I <laughs> Here's a little tap hit by Sosa. The pitch recovering. One away. We'll take a look at the swing of Mark Grace as he gets this rolling curveball and knows it's gone when it left the bat. The Southwest Plainview camera will take a look at this ball just missing going on Sheffield Avenue. And how far did it fly? 407 happy feet. 
One out, six in. There's a strike call over the outside corner. It looks like the Cubs are going to ruin Houston's hopes for a wild card assignment just as Houston ruined the Cubs' wishes yesterday. But wouldn't have made any difference anyway so far as the Cubs were concerned because Colorado won. And San Francisco has scored two runs in the first inning at Colorado, taking a two to nothing lead. Boy, you see where Hideo Nomo, as you would expect, was a pitcher who won the big one for the Dodgers. There's a foul ball out of play. He struck out 11. No more did. Winning his 13th game of the year. Gonzalez one behind Butler tied with Finley and a few others in triples. And Drabeck throws a lot of triples. Strong and he struck him out. Two men gone. And here's the ninth man to come up in the inning. Harvey Dunstan. Here's the answer to the trivia question, and it is, of course, Bob Watson. At San Francisco. Dunstan, <laughs> there's a Shawnel meter, 297. Here's a high fly ball. Should be caught to win this carrying it. And Derek May finally makes the catch. Six run. And there were six hits. No, no one error, nobody left. Harry Carey from Chicago's Rigby Field, where the Cubs are leading six to nothing. Four classic episodes. This is wonderful. Just wonderful. Mayberry's 35th. Tuesday at 7 on WGN. <laughs> the Harry Unplugged T-shirt. Available at Wrigley Field, the Chicago Tribune gift store, or by calling 1-800-575-2558. Have your credit card ready. There's more information on the World Wide Web. Well, look who's here. Herschel Walker and Tony Dorsett. Two of the best college football running backs I ever saw. I'll bet you they're swapping some pretty good football stories. Next time, I'm telling you, Tony. Right profile. Really, Hersh? I've always favored my left, man. Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Touchdown! You think next time we should wear the helmets? In my case, the helmet is definitely on. What do you get when you fly the low fare airline? Fun fares. Well, you've waited so long for a fare to get so nice and low. Get out now, you really should fly. Light up the night. Southwest Airlines' new fun fares are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just Why to the fun of it. Tempers never cool in the heat of the night. Now, you all don't say anything about this to anybody else. Yeah. Hi again, everybody. Back with our producer, director, Arnie Harrison, Steve Stone. I'm Tom Brenneman back at Wrigley Field, Chicago. The Cubs certainly doing all they can to make this the final game the Astros will play this season. A 6-0 Cub lead at the end of three. Well, this year, the Cubs have really treated Doug Graybeck terribly, and today, no exception. Six earned runs in the third inning. A little spotty defense on the part of the Astros. The Cubs took advantage of it. You know, Stoney, you wonder how in the world Derek May, John Cangelosi, knowing this is the single biggest game of the season how you have those mental lapses 
Well, it's one of those things you don't block the ball in the outfield, but also a couple of very hard hit balls that inning. And Steve Traxel has a big lead. Well, 6 nothing our score, and Derek May trying to slice into that lead. And down the right field line, fair ball, home run by Derek May. So the Astros on the board now trail 6-1. With the wind blowing out here, there really is no such thing as a safe lead as Derek May just crushes that ball. And we'll watch it one more time. Derek May hitting his eighth home run is second in as many days. And he gets every bit of this one. You know, Stoney, it appeared as though there were some words exchanged somewhere after this at bat. Well, you see May just standing there watching. I think he was just waiting to see if it was going to be fair or foul. And there you see May uh, across his left shoulder having something to say, it appeared, to the pitcher Steve Traxel. Maybe Steve Traxel had something to say about Derek May standing and watching that home run and Derek May answering. 0 and 2 on Tony Eusebio. And here's May when he came to home plate. Well, there you see having something to say to Mark Parent, the catcher, as well. One ball, two strikes. Six one ball game with the Astros trailing the Cubs but a long way to go we're only in the fourth and now the count even at two and two Maggot and waits on deck. Now the Cubs of course yesterday mathematically eliminated. From postseason aspirations as it goes to. Three and two Eusebio did not go around and Greg Bonet on the appeal certainly agreed. But the Cubs don't want Houston to get there either. Houston needs to win and bank on a Colorado loss at home to the Giants later today to force a one game playoff. That one lined in the center. And Brian McCray able to make the grab. And that was a rocket and fortunately it stayed up long enough for McCray to make the play. This one hit hard enough to almost knock him over in center field. It is a bullet. But you see it staying up and Brian making the play. Two hard hit balls here in the inning against Traxel. Mays home run onto Sheffield and now the liner by Eusebio. And here's Magadan, who just missed hitting a home run to deep right center in the second inning. Well, the news earlier today, in case you weren't with us, manager Jim Riggleman got a one-year contract extension. That means it'll run through the 1997 season. Club also announced that the members of Riggleman's coaching staff, Tony Muser, Dan Radisson, Ferguson Jenkins, Billy Williams, Dave Bialis, and Mako Oliveras have been retained for 96. So congratulations to all parties involved. And a little stability as far as the Cubs are concerned. You start something obviously the job not done yet and there'll be some continuity as far as the front office and the field staff. And continuity is certainly not something that you would say necessarily works hand in hand with the Cubs franchise in recent years. No, but things changing somewhat as you see the bullpen up and going. Dan Radisson one of the members of that staff coming back. It's nice to see all the coaches are put in. Such long hard hours this year with his team rewarded by being told relatively early that they don't have to worry about what's going to happen during the winter time. There's Mark McGuire and Andy McPhail looking on. Two and two the count on Dave Magadan. One out one in none on and Magadan a rocket but right at Hernandez the second baseman for out number two. 
Drexel not exactly fooling the Astros this inning. Three very hard hit balls in a row. But only one run in and two outs to show for it as Magadan hits a bullet. But Hernandez right there to make the play. Sims went down on strikes with a runner at second base in the Houston second inning. Been a rough sophomore season for Steve Traxel last year the Sporting News National League Rookie Pitcher of the Year. But this season only seven wins in 20 decisions and an ERA by and large Tony which has been right around five if not a little bit less. Well, it's always nice to finish it up on a winning note and Steve Traxel does have a big lead in this one. By Dunstan in the left center field, a base hit by Sims. So the inning stays alive for Gutierrez. One on, two out, a 6 1 Cub lead here in the fourth. The fourth hard hit ball in a row, and this one getting by Dunstan, a high fastball. And Sims hits it right on the button. Dunstan with the all out effort, but he can't come up with it. And now Mark Parrott out. Talk to Steve Traxel about perhaps changing some speed. Ricky Gutierrez has had a couple of very good series against the Cubs when he's had an opportunity to play. Oh, he was a big part of the Houston win yesterday. He had a pair of doubles in the fifth again in the seventh score and runs and the one in the seventh inning proved to be the game winning run. Runner at first two down. And it's in the air. Trouble here down the right field line. Sammy is not going to get their fair ball. On to third goes Sims. So the Astros runners on the corners. And now a pinch batter will be sent up. Hitting for Doug Drabeck. Now Mike Brumley was in the on deck circle. But he is now being called back into the Houston dugout. And we'll see who comes up. Well you certainly have enough candidates with the expanded rosters could be Milt Thompson. Could be Rick Wilkin. It looks like Milt Thompson is trying to find a batting helmet. And that's who it is indeed going to be. Thompson on Friday. Collected what looked to be the death blow for the Cubs in the eighth inning. A one nothing game he came off with a two run two out single against Jamie Navarro giving Houston a three nothing lead. They carried that lead of course into the bottom of the ninth inning and if you're Terry Collins Tony you have to be saying to yourself it should never have come to this the final game of the year where you have to win and pray for a Colorado loss. They blew six leads in the game on Thursday. They blew a three nothing lead going to the bottom of the ninth inning on Friday and bear in mind both of those days Colorado lost its game. Now Jim Riggleman out to the mound to talk with Steve Traxel. Traxel has been hit hard this inning and he's got to get by Milt Thompson before he goes to the top of the order and in the fourth inning right here. Two outs. And Milt Thompson stepping in hitting 214. 12 for 53 is a pinch hitter this year. He's hit a home run and he's driven in eight in a pinch hitting roll. Very early in the game but certainly a key time for Houston. Trailing by five runners on the corners with two out. And Thompson fouls it straight back. Line on Drebeck. Three innings, six runs on six hits. One walk, one strikeout, and one home run. Runners on the corners, two away, 0 and 1 to Milt Thompson. A ball to strike. Sims at third Gutierrez on at first and the one one is way outside can see the leadoff man waits on deck. 
Well, there's a lot of trouble here if you don't get Thompson because after Cangelosi, you know about Vigio and Bagwell. And these big leads with the wind blowing out can disappear in a hurry. 2 1 pitch. And he dumps it out of play. It'll go to 2 and 2. Well, the New York Yankees in front 5 0 over Toronto at the end of 5 at Sky Dome. San Francisco 2 in the first, Colorado 1 in the bottom of the inning at Coors Field in Denver. Two and two to Thompson. Two on, two out. And now the count full, and the runner at first, Gutierrez, will get an early start. Bullpen certainly has been used the last few days for the Cubs. 3 2 pitch fouled away by Thompson, and it appears he'll get busier still. Anthony Young trotting on down to the bullpen. And he'll begin to throw. Sims at third base. Gutierrez a runner at first. Cubs in front 6 1 here in the fourth inning with two out. And another 3 2 pitch up coming to Milt Thompson. Batting for Drabeck. Fraxel okaying the sign. Gutierrez will get started. And Fraxel hoping that that's going to work. Well, he's also hoping that Greg Bonet would take the throw at first because Mark Grace was well in back of Gutierrez. 3 2 pitch. In the air to left center field. McCray on the run. That ball is gone. Pinch hit home run to left center field by Thompson. A three run blast. And the Astros, who trailed 6 0 coming into the fourth, are now only down by two. Well, the Astros have had plenty of these this season, Stoney. The pinch hit long ball. Nine of them this season, a club record. And that's the second for Milt Thompson as he now has driven in 11 runs in a pinch hitting roll, his 13th pinch hit, his second pinch home run. And Traxel, even when he throws the ball down, the ball goes in the air when it's hit. Angelosi will beat the throw to the bag, putting down the bunt. So now the tying run will come to the plate. Craig Biggio. Great bunt by Cangelosi because once you get it by the pitcher, all you have to do is beat him to the bag. And Traxel stopped, started, stopped, and started. And he might have hurt his leg in the play because Brian McCann has come out to have a word with Traxel. Traxel given a 6 nothing lead. At the end of three, and now the Astros have a tying run coming to the plate after scoring four times here in the fourth inning. Traxel today has given up his 23rd and 24th home runs of the year. And from the Southwest Plainview camera, we'll take a look at Milt Thompson, who reaches out on this fastball about thigh high and takes it out of the ballpark in left center field. Now Traxel given a couple of warm up tosses make sure he's all right and he says he's going to stay in Bill Thompson a huge pinch hit three run home run so now the batter Biggio he is single to left field and fly to center. San Francisco has added another run in the second inning. They lead three to one. And you can bet that the Astros doing a lot of scoreboard watching here today. Popped up straight back and out of play. Well perhaps seeing that the Giants got the early 2-1 lead. 
inspired these Astros when they came to bat here in the fourth. You think it's, you know, you hear it every season, Stoney, a little too early to be scoreboard watching. <laughs> you don't think it is, huh? I don't think it's too early right now, no. <laughs> to Biggio and it's popped up. Let's see if the wind will bring this back. Parent, a fan, I think they're going to get the ball. Yep. I think they're going to call him out. Yeah, they are, and rightfully so. That is the correct call. Terry Collins is going to argue, but Parent was standing there ready to catch the ball, and the inning is over. Four runs for the Astros. Here you get one more look. And in the middle of the fourth inning, the Cubs lead six to four. I'm Cleghorn. Akilah's going to a dance and she doesn't want mom cramping her style. You never wanted me to take you to any of your dances either. You're eating this up, aren't you? Well, it might be a bit unchristian like to say this, but yes! Then, on first time out, Nathan's writing the book of love. Why are you hanging around here? Research. See, the protagonist in my book is a guy that knows everything there is to know about women. So we can rule out autobiography? <laughs> Genetic data on WGN Channel 9. Which genius is not like the other? Bill Gates, Carl Sagan, Einstein, Urkel. Give up? Hint, Bill Gates owns a lot more stuff. <laughs> for more brain stimulation like this, tune into Family Man for a true comic genius. You know that in Kenya, Urkel means a benign fist on the foreleg of a wildebeest? Urkel. Now on WGN, weekdays at 4 and 6. WGN is proud to salute Chicago's Latino community during Hispanic Heritage Month. Tommy, uh, on behalf of the entire crew, uh, we just want you to know how we feel. We're going to miss you. It's been great working with you. And uh, we've got a couple of things for you. The uh, whole crew signed the baseball for you. And we spent big bucks and got you a GN sweater. And we have just one message before you leave. And I'll be like Lawrence Welk. One, two, three. Good, Good luck, luck, pal! <laughs> oh, guys, thank you Woo! very, very, very much. I greatly appreciate it. You guys did spend the Ben Bucks. I just wonder, uh, Stoney, if, if perhaps uh, Arnie is going to put this in on his expense account. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And I would be watching that expense account very carefully. Well, guys, uh, sincerely, thank you so very, very much. And uh, the ball signed by all the members of the crew, the uh, men and women that bring you Cub baseball each and every day. And, and I know they'll continue to do that uh, even better next season uh, without me. Uh, Harry and Stoney and the rest of the boys will be here. And I have a few more words to say to everybody. Uh, we get to the bottom of the sixth inning. But guys, gals, thanks a lot. Well, we do the best job in all the baseball all across America each and every day. And a lot of great friends and a lot of great memories. And again, I uh, have something to say a little bit later on. Darrell Kyle on the mound for Houston and having some problems getting the ball over the plate, which has been the only thing that has stopped him. And went into left field, a base hit by Parent. Kyle really has great stuff, but his control this year has been very spotty. He was sent down to the minor leagues. In 126 innings, he has walked 73. Now you see him fall behind 3-0, and Mark Parent given the 3-0 green light, driving the ball into left field. As the Cubs, after putting six on the board in the third inning, cannot rest on their laurels because the Astros' offense is very potent these days. Hernandez a batter. Parent at first, nobody out, and Kyle misses outside, ball one. 
Colorado batting in the bottom half of the second inning. The Giants leading Brett Saberhagen and the Rockies 3 to 1. Astros trail the Cubs here, however, 6 4. Popped up. Right side of the infield, Biggio will make the play, one away. Steve Traxel, who drove in a run last inning to help his cause, getting another opportunity here. Good bunt. Bagwell looked at second, thought about it momentarily, but he'll take the sure out at first. Traxel is six sacrifice. Heron on his second base, two down in the inning. And that call has to come from Eusebio, who has a play in front of him. You've got to figure, Tom, he had a shot at second base. And I think had he just caught the ball whirled and through, he'd have had him easily. You see it right there. He's not even halfway yet. And you know that Parent does not have the best speed. If Eusebio's calling the play, he probably would have called second. But Bagwell, knowing that the wind blowing out here, he'd rather stay out of the big inning than take a gamble as you go to the top of the order, decided to get the shore out. Brian McCray, one of two, singled and scored back in the six-run third inning. Cubs in front, 6-4. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Runner at second and two down, and Kyle deals a strike. McRae and he waves through the Kyle off speed pitch. Nero Kyle has an outstanding curveball. It's got great movement. It breaks straight down when it's over the plate. And here's a man with as good a stuff as there is in the league, still trying to find his way with his control. But if he ever does harness it on a consistent basis, he can be one tough starter. 0 oh and 2 to McRae. And he's out on strikes to end the inning. Another nasty pitch there by Daryl Kyle. A hit one left at the end of four, a two run Cub lead. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by your local Buick dealers, the new symbol for quality in America. So the Nittany Lions of the Fighting Irish have given us another great college football game. And here are two tired generals looking for each other at midfield. Tough break, Joe. Yeah, I know. The tie's too much. It's nice, but maybe next time something in a crew neck. Uh, how do you think that'd be too casual? Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Look, Joe, it's not the end of the world. Next cup, think pastels. Your car's knocking. Let us in. How can you protect your most valued possessions without spending a fortune? Get hip to the square. Builder Square has home security all locked up. For openers, there's deadbolts and lock sets of every kind. There's smoke detectors and all types of fire extinguishers and security lighting of every description. Get a great square deal price this week on the Door Club for maximum security in your home. It's easy to install on only 4614. Builder Square. We'll get you squared away. Two solid hours. Four classic episodes. Well, boys, this is it. Mayberry's 35th. Tuesday at 7 on WGN. Well, we're back at Wrigley Field, Chicago. The Astros, their season hinging on this game along with the Colorado outcome. The Astros need a win along with a Rockies loss to force a one-game playoff that would be at Coors Field in Denver tomorrow. 
Astros down by two to the Cubs and Bagwell looks at bowl one. Speedy recovery we send out to Anthony Pecora. Watching today's ball game. Two and oh to Bagwell. This is where you don't want to be on Jeff Bagwell. You get behind him. He's got such good plate coverage. And he just missed hitting the ball out of the ballpark in the third inning. 2-0 to Bagwell. Thrilled in a deep left field. He's lost this one. And the Astros now trail 6-5 after falling behind 6-0 at the end of three. Bagwell is 21st home run of the season. Well, you make enough 2-0 fastball pitches, you're going to have a lot of balls hit out of the ballpark, and that's 25 given up by Traxel. And not much doubt about that one. The 87th driven in by Bagwell. Take a look at the location of this. 2-0 high fastball. He's just not going to miss many of these. Burgess and Jenkins will come out for a visit as Rivera, the left-hander, and Anthony Young, the right-hander, begin to throw Traxel had a 6-0 lead in this game. Astros got four in the fourth, one more here in the fifth. From the Southwest Airlines Plainview camera, we'll take a look at your classic home run swing. And there is the Southwest Airlines Plainview camera for the last time in 1995. And there's Jeff Bagwell for what he's hoping is not the last time in 1995. Matter now Derek May he played long ball down the right field line on to Sheffield in the fourth inning and add words with Traxel and Mark Parent talked about Rivera and Young throwing in the bullpen a one run game. One and one to Derek May. Into right center field. McRae won't get to this. It'll go to the Ivy. Derek May on his way to second, and he'll pull up. With No, he won't. He's coming to third, and the throw gets away from Hernandez and May into third base safely. You could see him slow down, Stoney, for maybe one or two strides, and then he figured, I'll take a gamble. Well, it was a gamble because if this throw is handled, he's going to be out by 20 feet at third base. Throw comes in and the ball is not handled and that's going to be it for Steve Traxel. Well this start today is pretty much the way the season has gone for Steve Traxel. Anthony Young on the pitch and we'll be back with more in a moment. You could say we were out for blood, and we found it. An icy cool corner with an eye for detail. The murders here are copycat killings. Richard Berge. I'm good with guns. A quick fire and hot shot. I was damn near disassembled, Dave. He's a wolf in cop's clothing. Very kinky. But then, she's no angel either. Do you mind covering up your face? From the producers of Magnum P.I. Freeze! One West, Waikiki. Tonight at 10.30 on WGN Channel 9. Kirk finally escapes the kids and goes on a Cinderella dream date. All those times I told you to get lost, what I really meant was this. But when the clock strikes 12, it's Pumpkin City. If you kiss me, I'll have to hurt you. Kirk! Then, Simon interviews his brother for a job. Describe yourself in five words. I'm about to smack you. Perfect! There's just one catch. I'm the muffin girl. Simon, tonight at 7 on WGN Channel 9. The tying run at third base, nobody out. 6-5 Cubs here in the fifth inning, and now on to pitch is Anthony Young. Anthony Young comes in, and the game is in his hands. Traxler cannot qualify for the win, even if Anthony were to hold him down here as he didn't survive the fifth inning. So Anthony at 3-4, three 366 ERA, on for the 32nd time. He inherits Derek May at third base, and nobody out.
Eusebio is grounded to second base, lined hard to center field. And it's foul out of play. He's down a strike. Johnson trying to get the runner, couldn't do it. And safe at first is Eusebio. Well, Howard Johnson certainly thought that he had a very good shot at Derek May, who gets caught off the bag, but he's able to get the hand in, so says John McSherry. Watch it again. Johnson thought he had him all the way. McSherry says no, and that puts runners at the corners. We'll slow it down for you. And McSherry right on the play, called him safe, and things getting a little tighter for the Cubs here. Goes as a fielder's choice. Runners on the corners, one run in, nobody out. Cubs had a 6-0 lead at the end of three. The Astros got four in the fourth inning. One more here in the fifth, and now try to tie the game. Dave Magadan has doubled to right center field and lined to second base. He looks at a called strike, and Magadan did not like the call by Ed Montague. Well, with nobody out, the Cub infield will trade the double play for the run. Still a long way to go in this one. Here's the 01. A ball a strike. They have played two at Coors Field in Denver, where the Giants lead the Rockies three to two, scoring in every inning thus far. Two and one now to Magadan, tying run Derek May at third. The lead run, Eusebio across the diamond at first. Grace playing back behind him over there. Trying to cover up the hole on the right side of the infield with a left-handed batting Magadan. Three balls and a strike. Derek May, the tying run at third base here in the Astros' fifth. Cubs in front, 6-5. Nobody out. 3-1 to Magadan. There's ball four, and they are loaded up for Mike Sims. Sims in the game is struck out looking. He singled to left center field and scored on the three-run pinch hit home run by Milt Thompson in the four-run fourth inning. Base is loaded and nobody out. 1-0 as it missed down and away. One zero to Sims on the ground. They'll have to hurry to get two. Hernandez turns, throws to first in time for the double play. But the tying run, Derek May scores from third. No RBI for Sims, and it's a six-six game. The lead run at third with two out. A good slider away and a good pivot at second base by Hernandez, making sure that he gets the throw off before he's taken out. Good play on the other end by Mark Grace. And the score is tied, but the Cubs get a couple of very important outs. Good play on both ends of this one. Good effort by Grace. So now the go-ahead run is at third. Two down for Ricky Gutierrez. Two of two on the afternoon. He doubled the right field in the third inning, singled down the line, and scored in the fourth. They'll walk him. 
and take their chances with Brumley who is coming off the bench. Now, you remember what Brumley did in the series open. Came in 0 for 16 on the season and had a pinch hit home run in the 11th inning and it came against a man on the mound, Anthony Young. While we have a moment, let's back out for a station ID on the Cubs television network. This is America's number one sports station, WGN-TV, Chicago. So now Brumley to bat for Kyle. Kyle win an inning, allowed a hit, no runs. And for a while, it looked like that pinch home run would win the game, but that was the game the Cubs came back six different times to beat the Astros. 6-6 six, six game, go-ahead run at third with two down, and here's a pitch to Brumley, and he chopped it foul into the Astro dugout. He's down a strike. Outfield shading Brumley to go the other way. McCray slightly into left center. And now the 0-1 in the air. Straightaway center field should end the inning. And it does. So the Astros tie the game. A run, two hits, two left. We go to the bottom of the fifth, even at six. When was the last time you played in the rain? Let your hair go wild. Flexed your muscles to the world. Stayed up past your bedtime. When was the last time you really had fun in a car? Riviera by Buick. Go ahead. Express yourself. This is L.A. We have tons of friends. This is Posh. This is my wife. This is my neighbor. This is my son-in-law. This is my very good neighbor. This is my number two daughter. Hi. This is my neighbor, John. When I found out that I needed surgery, it was kind of a shock. Luckily, it turned out. Aflac really helped protect our savings. Just really took the worry away. Aflac covers the unexpected cost of getting better so you can get on with life. Don is definitely not a dancer. The Bud Light Amateur Beach Challenge. They're lean. They're mean. Oh, that's killing us. Yeah. Ah. How about two out of three? I got it, I got it, I got it. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Oh. What's wrong with her? Make it a Bud Light. If a Cub hits a homer today, write down the distance, date, and your name, and send it to WGN. You could win a pair of round-trip tickets from Southwest, the low fare airline. This is WGN-TV, Chicago. Now we head for the bottom half of the fifth inning, a 6-6 game here at Wrigley Field. And now on the pitch, a third used today by Terry Collins, his left-hander Dean Hartgraves. Hartgraves comes in at 2-0, the RA 3 3 on for the 40th time. Control has been somewhat of a problem, 16 walks in 35 and two-thirds innings. He walks Scott Bullitt with the bases loaded the last time the Cubs saw him. And there you look at the numbers this year. So the game squarely in his hands. A 6-6 affair. Another game that fits right into the mode of this series, which has been just an outstanding series. It hasn't been artfully done, but it sure has been exciting. Howard Johnson leading things off. He's down a strike. Hojo two of two. Pair of singles. He knocked in a couple of runs in the third inning with a base hit to right and later scored.
in the air to shallow center. Angelosi coming in and he's there to make the play one away to begin the Cub fifth. As Tony Mark Grace a free agent at season's end. Speculation is of course as you look at what the Houston bullpen has done this season they have been brutal in this series by and large however. But many believe Grace will return but no contract talks have gotten started quite yet. Well, there's certainly a lot of questions to be answered by Ed Lynch and Andy McPhail. And I'm sure that they will begin to work on those questions as soon as the season is over. Of course, we'll have the playoffs in the World Series and a lot of things to be decided before we see what the 1996 Chicago Cub team is going to look like. And there is the brain trust of the Cubs. Well, Ed Lynch made the comment yesterday at lunch that he'll begin earning his paycheck in full starting Monday. A lot of ball clubs certainly at least in Ed's opinion will wait a while before they begin to try and re-sign their own free agents to get a better idea of exactly if there's any labor agreement how that thing of course looks and how it plays out whether you're having revenue sharing and then a salary cap and all kinds of questions that still need to be addressed. Derek May a late start can't get to it and Grace will go into second with his 51st double of the season. Derek May is not going to win any gold gloves in left field. This was a tough chance and Mark Grace in at second base and what a year in the extra base and doubles department for Mark Grace at a two run homer in the third is 16th of the year. He's driven in 92 and he just dumps his 51st double of the year in the left field. The Giants have come up with five runs in the third inning at Colorado. Brett Saberhagen has been knocked around by Dusty Baker's team today. And there you see an 8-2 giant advantage bottom of the third at Coors Field. In the dirt, it gets away from Eusebio. And the lead run, Grace, now 90 feet away with only one out. Terry Collins made an interesting move when he pinched it for Daryl Kyle with Kyle throwing the ball pretty well and going to the young man Dean Hartgraves who's always had problems getting the ball over the plate and the bullpen starts to work once again for Houston nothing to save anybody for here today and if the Astros need any type of incentive at all all they have to do is look at the board fair ball the Cubs take the lead 7 6 Sammy heading into second base with an RBI double and the Cubs lead by a run here in the bottom of the fifth RBI number 119 as this curveball is belted down the line and Mark Grace scoring yet another run. Second run he scored today, 97 runs scored this year. And Sammy adding to his RBI total. No chance at all for Magadan on this one. So now to be Gonzalez, the former Astro, is lined to second, struck out swinging, 0 for 2 on the day. Fijio. It'll be the second out of the inning, and Sosa advances 90 feet on to third. Now here comes Terry Collins, and he wants a right hander out of the bullpen to face Sean Dunstan. So we'll take a break in the action. Cubs in front, 7 6, bottom of the fifth. A long way to go. We'll be right back.
I'm Cleghorn. Akilah's going to a dance, and she doesn't want Mom cramping her style. You never wanted me to take you to any of your dances, either. You're eating this up, aren't you? Well, it might be a bit unchristian-like to say this, but... Yes! Then, on first time out, Nathan's writing the Book of Love. Why are you hanging around here? Research. See, the protagonist in my book is a guy that knows everything there is to know about women. So, we can rule that autobiography? <laughs> Genetic Data on WGN Channel 9. The Harry Unplugged T-shirt, available at Wrigley Field, the Chicago Tribune gift store, or by calling 1-800-575-2558. Have your credit card ready. There's more information on the World Wide Web. Seven six ball game with the Cubs in front of the Astros. Runner at third with two down in the fifth. Ron Santo doing the YMCA thing here in between innings. And that's not a pretty sight. No, it's not. Well, let's see. They're getting ready to do it here in a minute. We'll <laughs> stay right here with Ronnie a minute and see how he handles it. Here we go. Oh, man, an extra verse in there. Ah, too bad. Anyway, Jim Dorney now on the pitch. And he inherits Sammy at third base with two outs here in the fifth inning. There you look at the numbers this year on Jim Dorney. Man, he's going to face his Sean Dunstan. Maganin in at third. And now he's moved back a couple of steps, opening up the bunt up the third baseline if Dunstan so chooses. That one almost hit him. And he was squared around a bunt, thinking about driving home the run that way, but that one almost caught the back foot of Dunstan. Good idea, but you can't do it on that pitch. Cubs leading 7-6 with Sosa third, two down, and Dunstan a one hopper down to Magadan. And Doherty gets the job done, retiring Dunstan to end the frame. Cubs take the lead, a run, two hits a man left. At the end of five, a good one here at Wrigley Field. Unplugged T-shirt. Available at Wrigley Field, the Chicago Tribune gift store, or by calling 1-800-575-2558. Have your credit card ready. There's more information on the World Wide Web. You've always made a great team. Together growing. Dreaming. sharing the rewards along the way. Park Avenue. For the comfort, for the luxury, for the quality. Congratulations. You've earned it. Buick Park Avenue. Pushing count to three. Timeout is called right now. Shaq's got to do something big to get back yeah, in his game. commercial. Shaq is leaving the court. What are you doing? He's over there. He's on Lucy. What? I didn't know Shaq could ride a horse. Are you, pal? Well, the timeout is over. I wonder if he's going to get back. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Shaq's back. He's got it. How about that? He says there's nothing good on TV. Kirk finally gets his dream date with Elizabeth. Sort of. If you kiss me, I'll have to hurt you. Kirk. Tonight at 7 on WGN Channel 9. Well, Houston coming to bat here in the top of the sixth inning as the sun is certainly setting on yet another Cubs season here at Wrigley Field. But Houston hoping that the sun will come up tomorrow and mean a date at Coors Field in Denver, Colorado. And right now the Rockies batting in the bottom of the third, trailing the Giants 8-2. The Astros have to win today and hope that the Rockies cannot rally. See the Giants pick up a victory. Houston has had a terrible time the last three years winning 
whether it be Mile High Stadium or this year Coors Field. Well, they certainly would like to have the opportunity to turn that one around. They split with Colorado this year at four and four. And at Coors Field, they dropped two of three. I think Larry Durker, former Astro great right-hander and now Houston announcer, was saying that to his recollect, uh, recollection, Houston has won a grand total of three games in three years at Coors Field in Denver. All well, that would go out the window, however, if indeed they do have an opportunity to play that one game. Mm -hmm. But there's still a little work to do. Line caught by Grace off the bat of Cangelosi. And it's a big out to begin the six. This comprehensive telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has the right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is definitely prohibited. And a good way to start the sixth inning is Mark Grace takes away a double from John Cangelosi. Greg Biggio, the batter. And he looks at a strike. Biggio, one of three, singled in the first inning, has since fly to center and fouled out to the catcher. And there's Roberto Rivera, is up and throwing again in the bullpen. Yeah, it's the last opportunity that I'll have to remind you about those interesting Chicago Cub and WGN promos. I drive way back into left field. This is on the Waveland Avenue. And Biggio, who has just had an unbelievable series for the Astros, has tied the game at seven. If there's one free agent on the market that is proving all season, and in this series in particular, that he is a big-time player, it is Craig Biggio. Homer number 22, RBI number 77. And the combination of Biggio and Bagwell in the middle of that lineup is proving to be thunder and lightning as far as the Cubs are concerned. They've just murdered Cub pitching in this series, and that was a rocket onto Waveland, tying the score at seven. Anthony gives up his fifth home run of the year, and if you're going to give him up, give up a bomb, and that was a bomb. What a player. Talked to Biggio before the game today as Bagwell looks at Strike one asking about a free agent offseason that he'll be facing. He said, obviously, I'd love to stay in Houston. Come up in Astro. Would like to stay in Astro. And there's a broken bat roller down to third. And flag well thrown out by Johnson. But he said he'll just have to wait and see on whether or not the Astros will be willing to put up, you know, it's going to be big money. Well, he's making pretty good money now, and he'll be making probably a lot better money before it's over. You take a look at a number two hitter with 22 home runs. There's no question it's gone. The only question is how far. Derek Mays had a big time of it today. Two of three as you see Perez joining Rivera in the bullpen. May is homer tripled scored twice. And he has his third hit of the game. Experience the Cubs at beautiful Wrigley Field with preferred seating and as a 96 season ticket holder whether your tickets are for personal use business entertainment employee recognition or incentives there's no better way to see a Cub game for information about full and partial season ticket plans 312 404 Cubs the number to dial coming up Tuesday night on GN Chicago's very own celebrates the 35th anniversary of one of television's greatest programs. The Andy Griffith Show, first one on the air October 3rd, 1960, and now 35 years to the day. We have quite a celebration plan. Don't miss four classic episodes in Mayberry's 35th, Tuesday night at 7 on WGN Channel 9, and Gary Pressey is if on cue, playing the Mayberry theme. Dunstan will get the force at second to retire the side. One run, two hits, one left. We go to the bottom of the six. A 7-7 seven, seven game.
Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Pepsi. Nothing else is a Pepsi. Let me guess. One side of you craves easy chair comfort, while the other side itches for performance, right? Well, meet Buick Regal with its famous 3800 V6 engine and grand touring suspension. Add to that an all-new interior with body-sensitive seats. And finally, there's a car for the two of you. Buick Regal. Emma, seems like we've known each other forever. Yeah, I know. Two weeks. Will you marry me? Because Emma, I love you, man. Oh, Johnny, you're not getting my Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Johnny? Make it a Bud Light. Jane? It's Joan. Jane, Joan, whatever. I feel like I've known you forever. What do you get when you fly the low fare airline? Fun fares. Well, you've waited so long for a fare to get so nice and low. Get now. Now you really should fly. Light up the night. Southwest Airlines' new fun fares are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just for the fun of it. Very kind of those fans to make up that sign today. 7-7 game. And uh, for those of you at home, I certainly beg for just a, a moment or two to gather a few thoughts and pass those along for the six years that I've had here. The conclusion of another long and oft times dramatic Cubs season brings with it the reenactment of a scene in the clubhouse that is as old as baseball itself. The players will shake hands, bid fond farewells, and scatter to the four winds. Baseball's inner workings have made it a virtual certainty that never again will all of the same players play for the same team in the same park at the same time. And for the here and now, that's just the way baseball is. Life, it would seem, is a series of goodbyes. A fact that certainly doesn't escape me on this, my final game as a Cub broadcaster. I'll remain at WGN Radio through the end of the year and then depart for new and expanded challenges. I leave with a warm and wonderful feeling about WGN Radio and television and the people who have made those call letters a work of art, a thing of beauty. In the fantasy of my dreams, I had envisioned broadcasting a Cubs pennant winner before I left. That didn't happen. But somewhere down the line, the Cubs will win it all and thereby reward the loyal fans I've come to admire as the greatest in the world. And I will rejoice with those fans when that moment comes, wherever the trail may lead me. WGN hired me for the Cubs job six years ago at the fuzzy-cheeked age of 26. As I reflect, I know it was a risky move on their part given the gigantic and veteran talents who had preceded me behind this mic, and I'll forever be indebted. If I've matured in the intervening years, and I'd like to think that I have, I owe it mainly to the fine men and women who represent this station. Naming names is difficult at a moment such as this, that there are certainly those that jump out from within my heart. Jim Dowdle, Dan Fabian, Dennis Fitzsimons, Wayne Vriesman, Lorna Gladstone, Tisa Lasort, Peter Walker, Jim Zorwick, our producer-director, Arnie Harris, Joe Corneo, the entire crew, our engineers on the radio side, Don Albert and Sam Humans. Don Granesco, the Cubs president when I signed on, Andy McPhail, Ed Lynch, Jim Riggleman, and their predecessors. Then there's Jack Rosenberg, the first to inform me about that intangible, that tradition that has lifted WGN sports into a class by itself. Jack, among others, has been instrumental in perpetuating that tradition through the years. And as for my broadcasting partners, Harry, Ron Santo, and Steve Stone, suffice it to say that I consider them the best, both professionally and personally. It has been a privilege and an honor to share the microphones with all three through the peaks and valleys that every season brings. From each, I learned a valuable lesson about baseball and about life itself. And I shall cherish my association with them forever. And as my days at WGN Radio and Television dwindled down, 
to a precious few. I say to one and all, thanks so much for the memories here in Chicago. The Cubs go down in order in the sixth inning. Harry Carey returns in the seventh. Stoney, my friend, it has been wonderful. Sure, lad. You could say we were out for blood. And we found it. An icy cold corner with an eye for detail. The murder's here, a copycat killing. Richard Berge. I'm good with guns. A quick fire and hot shot. I was damn near disassembled, Dave. He's a wolf in cop's clothes. Very kinky. But then, she's no angel either. Do you mind covering up your face? From the producers of Magnum P.I. Freeze! One West, Waikiki. Tonight at 10.30 on WGN Channel 9. Kirk finally escapes the kids and goes on a Cinderella dream date. All those times I told you to get lost, what I really meant was this. But when the clock strikes 12, it's Pumpkin City. If you kiss me, I'll have to hurt you. Kirk! Then, Simon interviews his brother for a job. Describe yourself in five words. I'm about to smack you. Perfect! There's just one catch. I'm the muffin girl. Simon, tonight at 7 on WGN Channel 9. American families have made their choice. Once again, they've chosen the Buick LeSabre as Family Circle Magazine's Family Car of the Year for reasons like safety, dependability, performance, and style. American families chose LeSabre as Family Car of the Year over every other sedan, foreign or domestic. Buick LeSabre, the American family, family car. WGN is proud to salute Chicago's Latino community during Hispanic Heritage Month. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey and Steve Stone. Well, here we are, 7-7. Seven and seven. The Cubs only have the knowledge of finishing off a great homestand with 9 out of 10. But Houston, with Colorado losing, could be the wild card team. Well, this game has gone just like this series. Most exciting, not artistic, but certainly it's given the fans its money's worth in this one. And Harry, today, no exception. All right, let's go finish the season ourselves in high style. All right, who's up there now? Dave Magadan leading it off against Terry Adams. First pitch a little bit low, ball one. Dave Mangadon's hit the ball hard all day. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Pitch a little bit low. Hey, Colorado came up with four in the third. And now it is a eight to six game in favor of the Giants. Magellan takes a strike call. Well, Colorado certainly pulling out all the stops, as is San Francisco, as are the Cubs and Houston. Two real good games. Magellan takes it low. I wonder how many home runs Dante Bessendis hit. Mandy's going to try to find out. Three balls and a strike. Boy, that's a game like this one. Line drive base hit for Magadan. So he's on with the go ahead run. And here's Mike Sims, hard hitting outfielder. He's had a number of big years and home runs in the minor league. And he's done well in limited action with the Astro. Nine homers. Walker had a two run homer and Eric Young hit a two run homer for the Rockies. Sims one out of three. He's going to swing away the pitch is high. We're in the top of the seventh. Yeah. 
He had a cut. Adams has won one loss, none and save one. 24 year old Alabama, Alabama youngster. There's a high fly ball going to be caught in short left field. Hey, the win is taking it, but Dunstan makes the catch. Sims popped to Dunstan in short left. One away. Sean Dunstan might be the best it ever was on pop-ups. He can go get them and knows the winds very well, drifts with it. And makes the play. He can go as far down that left field line as anybody I've ever seen. Terry Adams with one out, one on. And here is Ricky Gutierrez. He's been a hot hitter in this series. There's a line drive, hit well, hit well, but it's going to be caught by Brian McGray. Boy, that. That ball was hit hard right into the sun. He's got to fight that sun field at this moment of the afternoon. Two gone. And the pitcher do be. Wilkins is going to bat for Doherty. Wilkins hit a homer here yesterday. Another pinch hitter, Mill Thompson, homered with two on and a fourth for the Astros. Top of the seventh. Wilkins. It is seventh homer of the year yesterday. He's hitting 203, 250 for Houston. 203 altogether. Eight home runs. Two out. The pitch is high and outside. Crowd quiet at the moment. The Cubs got away to a six run lead. The Astros cut it to two with Four runs in the fourth. Then the Astros got two to tie it in the fifth. The Cubs got one to go ahead. The Astros got one to tie it again in the sixth. This has been a yo-yo type of a ball game. Two balls and the strike. Looking ahead to the bottom of the seventh. It'll be the top of the batting order. McRae, Johnson, and Grace. If, in any, if anybody gets on, Sosa. Wide ball three. Terry Adams. Outfield straight away the pitch ball four he walked him and that brings up Ken Cangelosi and Parent goes out trying to settle down Terry Adams and here comes Jim Riggleman out and there goes the bullpen to getting ready. The infielders come around with the exception of Dunstan and Grace. What do you think they're talking about? Mine is two men out there. Well, I think one of the things they're trying to do is give the bullpen a chance to get loosened up because Jim Riggleman took a long time out there. He's obviously telling him that Cangelosi is not going to swing at anything out of the strike zone. 
And if you need any more incentive at retiring Cangelosi, all you have to do is look in the on-deck circle at Craig Biggio. You certainly don't want to face him. Angelosi has beat out a bump today. There's a fastball over the outside corner. Angelosi drove in the decisive run yesterday, 98. Victory for Houston over the Cubs. Owen won the count. The outfield shades Cangelosi towards left. Cangelosi hitting 316. Strike two call. Oh, and two. Terry Adams, a good fastball. Tied up 7-7. Seven, seven. Top of the seventh. The pitch. Foul. And what did that hit off the camera, it looks like. A camera on top of the dugout. Colorado back in the ball game, trailing the Giants. Eight to six at the end of four. A little bit low. Walker hit his 36 home run, tying him with Sammy Sosa with one on for Colorado. And Eric Young was not known as a home run hitter, also. Hit a two run homer. Two out, two on. Suck him out. A fastball over the inside corner. So no run. One hit, two left. We go in the bottom of the seventh. All tied up. Seven, seven. All right. Gary Pressey, our wonderful card can arcan player. Listen now, sing good and sing loud, because this is the last time until next April. So let me hear you. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Very fortunate to have such a wonderful family. After his operation, his body was like twice the normal size. He was on this respirator for three weeks. It was kind of lonely around here. <laughs> I got half like through our company. The owner of the company felt that we should have it. It turned out fabulous. Aflac covers the unexpected cost of getting better so you can get on with life. Everything worked out wonderful. Dad? Yeah? There's a. Uh... Something I want to tell you. What is it, son? Well, Dad, you're my dad. And I love you, man. You're not getting my Bud Light, Johnny. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Ray, forget it, Johnny. Kirk finally gets his dream date with Elizabeth. Sort of. If you kiss me, I'll have to hurt you. Tonight at 7 on WGN Channel 9.
McRae leading it off. Score tied 7 7. It's a nitty gritty of this ball game now. Dave Veers on the mound, and he's a pretty good right hander who's had a fine year. Veers at 4 and 1, ERA 231. On for the 72nd time, and that leads the staff in appearances. And I talked to Mike Hannigan about Hanneman about uh, Veers. And he said he himself can't figure out, he's talked to other players. What that pitch is, it seems to be off speed. The bottom of it drops out approaching the plate and seemingly fools the hitters pretty good. But whatever it is, it's an effective pitch. He's ahead of McRae, one ball, two strikes. Bouncing ball, that'll be easy. Biggio throws him out, one gone. And here is Hosho. Hosho is two out of three, two runs batted in. Hojo, who's capable of hitting one out, the wind's still blowing. There's a slow curve in there for a strike call. Well, that's that pitch, Harry, that you said the bottom falls out. It, he's got the same motion as he has on his fastball, except the ball doesn't ever seem yeah. to get there. One strike and nothing. Here's the pitch. A little bit outside. And it's not a uh, the nickel. Uh, what's that Cir pitch? Circle hooting? change. No, the uh, a knuckle curve. Ball? Knuckle curve. No, that doesn't appear to be a knuckle curve. Pitch outside. Ball two. Now Hojo's got a good eye up there. He's drawn a lot of bases on balls. You rarely can win games without getting base runners. Woo, he had a rip. Two balls, two strikes. Final game of the season. Well, buddy. Another year has gone down the drain. 13 of them, hard to believe, isn't it? And this yeah. one went very, very quickly. And I, I know you will be here, but God willing, I will. I hope I will too, because I honestly think they're going to win next year. Well, they've got a chance, and a lot will depend on just exactly who they decide to bring back, who they might decide to go acquire, Harry. There certainly is a lot of questions, maybe more questions this year than in any year that we've had going into the offseason for the simple reason that there is nobody, Andy McPhail or Ed Lynch or any other executive in baseball, that can tell you what baseball is going to look like in 1996. Ball three, three and two. And Grace will be next. Mark has hit his 16th home run of the year. That's a career high. 51st double of the year. Fouled it back. Out of boy, host. Oh, Joe, foul off the good ones, take the bad one. There is Ed Lynch talking. You don't think he's making an offer to Sandberg to come back, do you? Well, I'm sure that <laughs> if Rhino would come back, he would be back with the Cubs. Harry, I've never seen him happier than he is now with yeah. a chance to spend some time with his family and an opportunity to get away from the pressures of baseball. I know that it was a very long, a very successful career for him. Some frustration at the end of his career, but with seemingly all of the pressures off now, he seems like a man at peace, and that's something we certainly wish for him. All right, the Hosho gets the base on balls, and here's Mark Grace. Outside, ball one. I feel very deep and straight away. Mark Grace with quite a year this year as we take a look at the defense. Grace with his 51st double of the year, his 16th home run of the year, and he's driven in 92. The hit and run was on, and Grace had a swing at a bad ball to protect the runner. 
One ball, one strike. Scott Nelson, director of baseball administration, also sitting down there with Ryan Sandberg and Ed Lynch. And I would imagine, well, Andy McPhail is, I didn't see him in that group, but you know he's around somewhere. He's the president of the ball club. One ball, one strike. Ball, two, two balls, and the strike one out. Sosa will be next. There's Andy, yeah, he's in that same group. Two balls and the strike. Johnson the lead. He made a false start, but they have his foot off the rubber. Veris. Oh, for another long one. He's back. Two balls and the strike. Ball three, low and high in the way. Three and one. Now would you start the runner? I would start the runner because Mark Grace makes contact. You certainly want to stay out of the double play. And Howard has pretty good speed. And the New York Yankees will go to postseason play. There goes the runner, swung on, line drive. Nice catch made by Derek May. Grace lined the ball hard to May and left. Two gone. Here's Sammy Sosa. Well, this is a redeemer for Derek May because this time he makes a fine play, taking this one right off the top of the grass, robbing Mark Grace of his third hit of the day. And on the hit and run, Howard has to scamper back to first base. Two out, one on. The Cubs have gone over the 1,894,000 mark with 24,000 plus today. So, so they're a million, 900. And 18,000. For the year. Ground ball, base hit in the left field. And Sammy gets his second hit of the day. Sosa singles to left. And here's Gonzalez against his old teammates. Sosa has not hit a home run since September the 25th against the Cardinals. Two out, two on. Luis Gonzalez, pitch outside. Dunstan would be next. And Eusebio trots out to talk to Barris. Dave Barris. Mel Stottlemyre now coming out. And Luis Gonzalez would like nothing more than to do some big damage to a team that traded him away. Luis hit the ball pretty hard today, but he has 0 for 3 to show for it. If the Astros win and Colorado loses, they'll be tied for the wild card and play it off tomorrow. One ball, no strikes. Veris delivers. 
outside ball two. He's keeping the ball away from Gonzalez. Rockies have scored another run, making it an eight to seven game and still a long way to go at Coors Field. That could wind up 15 14 before it's over. He fouled the pitch back into the stands on the third base side. The Pirates wallop the Cardinals 10 to 4 today. Cincinnati defeated Montreal 6 to 1. And the Mets shut out Atlanta 1 to nothing. How about those Mets? What a second half of the season they've had, Harry, and Dallas Green richly deserves to come back. And Ball he will three. be extended another year. Try to take his young pitching staff into 1996, and they will be a factor. Three balls and the strike. Runners at first and second. Johnson a long lead. Ball four. He walks and the bases are loaded. And how appropriate for Sean Dunson, who's had his greatest year coming to the plate with the bases loaded, two out, and the game tied 7 7. The Rockies have tied up the Giants 8 8, still batting in the bottom of the fifth. Dunson's hitless so far today. The bases are loaded. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Oh, he was jammed. Got a chance to be the. They fell to the plate from the fourth. What a smart play. He knew he didn't have a chance to get Dunstan at first, and he fired into the plate to force. Harry, this is a great play. One of the best you'll see when a heads-up ball player taking the only thing he's got, and they get the out at the plate. What an effort. He just got Johnson. Let's see who's... Boy, oh boy, what a play. He had... You know you had to ad lib that play. Harry, it's one of the smartest plays of the year. The only Ooh. chance that Bagwell had, he bare hands it in the same motion, throws home. What an effort, and Howard is still down around home plate. And now he's getting up. Hopefully he'll be okay. All right. At the end of seven innings, we're tied seven and seven. Which genius is not like the other? Bill Gates, Carl Sagan, Einstein, Urkel. Give up? Hint, Bill Gates owns a lot more stuff. <laughs> for more brain stimulation like this, tune into Family Man for a true comic genius. You know that in Kenya, Uncle means a benign cyst on the foreleg of a wildebeest? Urkel. Now on WGN, weekdays at 4 and 6. Two solid hours, four classic episodes, all from America's favorite hometown. Some one-horse town called Mayberry. We like it. The Andy Griffith Show first hit the air on October 3rd, 1960. Where did it all begin? And now, 35 years to the day, we're going to celebrate. Well, when will that be? Mayberry's 35th, a very special anniversary. Tuesday at 7 on WGN. the last time you played in the rain. Let your hair go wild. Flexed your muscles to the world. Stayed up past your bedtime. When was the last time you really had fun in a car? Riviera by Buick. Go ahead. Express yourself. Does the whole neighborhood go when it's time to fix up around home? Miller Square! So 
get you squared away. Harry Carey back to the ballpark. Boy, what a play with the bases loaded and two out. Two out. Dunstan was jammed. He hit the ball off his fist. The slow roller going towards BGO. Bagwell cut over in front of him, realizing that otherwise Dunstan would have a hit. Everybody's looking to see him throw to first. Nobody was there anyway. He picked the ball up on the run, fired into the plate for the force out. You know, they, they always say a left-handed first baseman is better defensively. This is a case where Bagwell, the only way he was able to make the play is because he was right-handed, not left-handed. And Howard Johnson didn't even realize that the play was coming home. He thought that he had scored easily. The play would be at first. And because of that, they were able to get him. Well, look who's up there again. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. The Rockies have moved into the lead, 9-8, at the end of five. BGO, the bright star of this series. Terry Adams on the hill, one ball, two strikes. The outfield deep, of course, shaded a little bit towards the left. Swung, and he struck him out. Adams strikes out Biggio. What is that they say? A child shall lead them. Well, good hard slider right here, and this is one of the reasons why the Cubs believe that Terry Adams has a tremendous amount of promise. He's got a wonderful slider, and that time completely overmatched Biggio. And now he's got to do something similar to Bagwell. Yeah. You strike out Biggio, you think you've done something, and here comes Bagwell. He started a swing, held up in time. One ball, no strikes. One ball, no strikes. One out. A little bit outside, ball two. Here was the count when Bagwell hit his home run in the fifth inning of Anthony Young, so young Terry Adams had to be careful where he throws this one. California leading open two to one. They still got a chance to catch Seattle, who's trailing five to three in the bottom of the six, but the Yankees have won the wild card in the American League. Whoa, he, he walked the ball four, right over his head. One out, one on. Let's pause for identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN-TV, Chicago. The new Cubs pitcher is number 55, Larry Cassia. Larry Cassia now pitching for the Cubs. Harry Carey back to the ballpark. The Colorado Rockies still at it. They lead 10-8 and still batting. At one time, they trailed 8-1. Two. We'll be back for more in a moment. You could say we were out for blood. And we found it. An icy cold corner with an eye for detail. The murders here are copycat killings. Richard Berge. I'm good with guns. A quick fire and hot shot. I was damn near disassembled, Dave. He's a wolf in cop's clothes. Very kinky. But then, she's no angel either. Do you mind covering up your face? From the producers of Magnum P.I. Freeze! One West, Waikiki. Tonight at 10.30 on WGN Channel 9. Kirk finally escapes the kids and goes on a Cinderella dream date. All those times I told you to get lost, what I really meant was this. But when the clock strikes 12, 
It's Pumpkin City. If you kiss me, I'll have to hurt you. Kurt. Then, Simon interviews his brother for a job. Describe yourself in five words. I'm about to smack you. Perfect! There's just one catch. I'm the Muffin Girl. Simon, tonight at 7 on WGN Channel 9. Harry Carey and Steve Stone. The situation is this. One out, a runner at first. The game tied 7-7. Meanwhile, in Denver, a double by Andre Galarraga, who was beamed a couple of days ago, drove in Bichette with the tying run 8-8. Eight eight. Around a feverish choice by Castillo scored Walker. That put Colorado ahead 9-8. And a double by Walt Weiss drove in Galarraga, and Colorado leads 10-8. There's a strike call. Cassian brought in to face Derek May, who's had three out of four, a single, a triple, and a homer. Cassian on for the 42nd time, a 1 0 record, a 193 ERA. Curveball outside. One ball, one strike. You know, I think Cassian probably has an average of one or two men he's faced. And quite often he walks the one man he faces. One ball, one strike. He fouled it back. One ball, two strikes. Eusebio would be next. If the Rockies win, the Astros will have to be satisfied with second place in the National League Center, Central, and the Cubs will be third. A high pop foul out of play. One ball, two strikes. Looking ahead to the bottom of the eighth, Parent will be leading it off. Hernandez, another pinch hitter for Cassian in all probability. There's a high fly ball. Who's going to get it? Base hit. Here comes a run around to third base. And Derek May is really biting viciously the hand that once fed him. This one floats into left field. It's a high fastball, and Louis Gonzalez coming out cannot make the play. Keeps the ball in front of him, however, which does save the run. Derek content to stay at first base. And Jim Riggleman out. And he's going to make another change, I do believe. Cassian has pitched 23 innings, allowed 22 runs. All right, new pitch coming in. We'll tell you more about him in a moment. want mom cramping her style. You never wanted me to take you to any of your dances either. You're eating this up, aren't you? Well, it might be a bit unchristian like to say this, but yes! Then, on first time out, Nathan's writing the book of love. Why are you hanging around here? Research. See, the protagonist in my book is a guy that knows everything there is to know about women. So we can rule out autobiography? <laughs> Genetic Data on WGN Channel 9. The Harry Unplugged T-shirt, available at Wrigley Field, the Chicago Tribune gift store, or by calling 1-800-575-2558. Have your credit card ready. There's more information on the World Wide Web. 
looks like a numb Cassian who only faces one or two men in outing has pitched 23 in the third innings has allowed 24 hits and 15 bases on ball. That means he's not retiring too many of those first hitters that he's brought in to face. So here, Kevin Foster. Foster on for the second time out of the bullpen. He made 28 starts this year, a 12 and 11 record, 4.55 ERA. The last five or six starts have been very good for Foster. He inherits runners at the corners, only one out. Tony Eusebio up, and he is an inviting double play target. He's had a sore knee, and so it's really hurt his effectiveness in trying to run. So a ground ball would turn into two. Seattle has taken no, they still trail Texas seven to three. The Angels are leading two to one. They would go into a first place tie. One strike and nothing. Eusebio. Foster's pitch pops up. Short right. The wind's blowing it out. Now watch him play to the plate. Here it is. And they've taken the lead. Eight to seven, Houston. Sacrifice fly. And the wind made that a sacrifice fly. It would have been a pop fly much closer to the plate ordinarily. No oh, chance to get back well as he scores and Houston goes ahead by one. And here's Magadan, the runner at first, two out. The Rockies scored one in the first, one in the second, four in the third, none in the fourth, four in the fifth to lead San Francisco, ten to eight at the end of five. If the Rockies win their will, they'll be the National League wild card. Nine, eight to seven in favor of Houston. Base hit like a bullet. Maggot and lines a solid hit to center. And that brings up Mike Simmons. And this is a extra base possibility. Simmons with runners at first and second. Already. Been inside eight to seven in favor of the Astros. Crowd quiet, 24,000 plus here today. Oh, a good save by Parent. Mark Parent. Boy, that bounce in front of the plate. Parent saves a wild pitch here, and that's a very tough save. Runners at first and second, eight to seven, Houston. Makes it count. Two balls and the strike. California leading Oakland five to one at the end of three, and Seattle losing seven to three in the bottom of the six at Texas. The 
don't have to have a one game playoff they finish in the first place tie or how does that I think the first determining factor here is who won the season series. Well yeah. now they'll put that in the paper too then. <laughs> we'll have to see about that one. I'm not sure if what happened. Mandy can you check that. Now the pitch here it is a little bit high ball of three. Kevin Foster has had a fine year as a starter. One twelve lost eleven. Relieving only for the third time this year. Three and two. On Mike Sims. Ball four. The bases are loaded. And here's Ricky Gutierrez. Two men are out. Yeah, they. I think that that uh, other sequence, Steve, applies only on wild card. When it applies to a tie, they have to play it off. So if it ends in the first place tie, they'll play it off for the title tomorrow. On one the count two out bases are loaded. Well that evens a count. Open up and going again for the Cubs. David Schwartzball warming up. Two balls and the strike. Ricky Gutierrez. He's had a couple more hits today. Batting 270. Two balls and the strength. Hi, pop fly. Somebody ought to catch it. And Brian McRae. And one run scores to put him ahead. We go into the bottom of the eighth. Eight to seven. Houston leading. A participating advertiser on Cubs baseball is Aflac, insuring over 38 million people worldwide. The Bud Light Amateur Beach Challenge. They're lean. They're mean. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. What's wrong with her? Make it a Bud Light. You bought a performance car. Why not buy a performance gasoline? Ryan Sandberg, Billy Williams, Ernie Banks, Fergie Jenkins, Ryan McRae, and many more at the 11th Annual Cubs Convention, January 19th through the 21st at the Chicago Hilton and Towers, sponsored by Pepsi. Enjoy autograph and photo sessions, hitting and pitching clinics, and much more. All proceeds benefit Cubs Care. For more information, call 312-404-CUBS. We'll see you at the Cubs Convention. Eric Carey back at the ballpark as we go into the bottom of the eighth inning. 
There's my son-in-law, Coley Newell, with my grandson, Brendan Newell, the most, most publicized grandson in America. All right, go home and eat some candy. All right, let's get some run. See you later. Parent, trying to get something going. Mouton playing left field, center field. Or oh, where is he? Right field. Mouton replaces Sims. M-O-U-T-O-N. One strike and nothing. Whoa, he swung, tried to check it, but went around. Texas, two more. They now lead nine to three over Seattle at the end of five innings. That would mean if Colorado can hold its lead, which is 5-1 at the end of three, an America League playoff for the Western Division title tomorrow. One ball, two strikes. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Time running out for both Houston and the Cubs. Struck him a fastball over the outside corner. Parent called out on strikes. One gone. Here's Hernandez. Hernandez has had a hit. One out of three. Well, we learned something today. And I'm, I would imagine everybody else did too. If there's a tie for a wild card, the winner will be judged as who, whoever had the best record against their opponent or, or their league I opponent. I believe the opponent. Yeah. Now the pitch swung and missed. One ball, two strikes, Veras. Out in front of another hitter, one ball, two strikes. Bouncing ball, fumbled, recovered, throws out at first base. Boy, the play the Bagwell made on Dunson looms greater and greater in retrospect. What a tremendous... Not only the physical a assets of the play, but the perception of it in advance. The ability to think that that's the only play I might have and making a perfect throw to get him. Scott Bullitt coming on to pinch hit. And he has done quite a job in that role. 11 for 36 with a home run and two driven in as a pinch hitter. Hitting 268 overall, and the stock of Scott Bullitt certainly has gone up considerably as the season has moved along. Base hit from by Bullitt. And here comes Brian McRae. Bullitt hit the first pitch hard to right. And if McRae has had 12 home runs, 11 with nobody on base, the other one with the bases loaded. What a spot for one. Now, Bullock can fly. Any kind of a double would have a chance to score. Two out, a runner at first. Her ball outside, ball one. We're in the eighth. Eight to seven, Houston. Had a cut, fouled it back. The American League West Division Championship is on the line. Seattle, now leading by a game, trails nine to three at the end of five. At the end of six, make that. Now the pitch. Swung, fouled it off. Strike two. California Angels, no, 
no chance for a wild card because the Yankees won their game, but still tied for first place, a place they held most of the season, you know. If they win, they're leading Oakland five to one, bottom of the fourth. Two out, one on. Brian McRae. Inside, two and two. Johnson is a hitter next. Two out, a runner at first, two and two, the count. Foul, the back had a good cut and a high fastball. Oh boy, I'd like to have seen him connect on that one. Two balls, two strikes. There goes Bullet. Here comes a peg. Too high. Now his hand slid off the bag. Holy cow. He was real safe, and then his hand was off the bag and he was tagged out. So at the end of eight innings, it's still eight to seven, Houston. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, a convenient Midway Airport, the official airline of WGN-TV Sports. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. American families have made their choice. Once again, they've chosen the Buick LeSabre as Family Circle Magazine's Family Car of the Year for reasons like safety, dependability, performance, and style. American families chose Le Sabre as Family Car of the Year over every other sedan, foreign or domestic. Buick Le Sabre, the American family, family car. What do you get when you fly the low fare airline? Fun fares. Well, you've waited so long for a fare to get so nice and low down. Now you really should fly. Light up the night. Southwest Airlines' new fun fares are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just Why to the front of it. Two solid hours, four classic episodes. Oh boy, this is it. Mayberry's 35th, Tuesday at 7 on WGN. Harry Carey back at the ballpark. Here's Andy Stankiewicz. A pinch hitter takes the strike call. Matt Franco's going into play second. That's a little low. We're in the top of the ninth. Eight to seven, Houston. A high pop fly. Franco going out. The wind blows it. And Sammy Sosa makes the catch. Franco wasn't 30 feet away from it. He started out as a a pop fly on the infield and the wind just carried it a long way. That's why don't don't go away, folks. We have McRae, Johnson, Grace coming up in the bottom of the ninth. And you have to watch the bunt with Cangelosi, who bunted his way on in the fourth inning, dragging it by the pitcher. One out, nobody on.
There's a pitch high and outside. Joe Corneo, our assistant producer. All these people work on Cub baseball. Mandy Cohen, Russ Rodriguez, Joe Paul's back. Now the pitch here it is. A little bit low to Cancer Loney. Ball three, Foster. Trailing by a run. Strike call. There's a few more. Should be mentioned. Mark Stencil. Dave Grundvig. Grundvig, Grundvig Mike Yellow. Don't tell me how to pronounce a nice Italian name. <laughs> Mark B Beckham. The pitch. There's a fair ball into the right field corner. And Cangelosi's on his way to second base with the double. Boy, that little guy. Still a good ball player. One out, he doubles to right. And it shares the fact that you've got to get by Biggio and Bagwell before this one is over. As John Cangelosi just crushes this 3 1 fastball, he's looking for the fastball all the way. Greg Bonet says it is. Well, fair. You know, the proof that uh, Foster didn't pitch that ball where he wanted to, the fact that the, all of the outfield was squared around towards the left, and Canzalone, Canzalosi, pulled the ball right over first base into the corner. And here's Biggio. He fanned in the eighth. He homered in the sixth. He singled in the first. One ball, no strikes. 8-7 Houston. Had a cut, missed it. One ball, one strike. Here are the tape operators on our baseball telecast. Pat McGowan, Steve Casey, and Scott Jones. One ball, one strike. A foul ball back. I would imagine it might be a little more difficult to get a good perception of the ball. The way the home plate area is covered in the shade from the stands. And so is the pitcher's mound. So the hitter's looking into bright sunshine, sunlight. To one ball, two strikes. Struck him out. A slider on the outside corner. Biggio taking this one, and this is a perfect pitch. Ed Montague ringing him up. There yeah, are good friends, the cameramen, and what a great brunch, brunch they are. Mike Clay, Ken Lyle, B.J. Scahill, Mark Clausen, Demetrius, Jim Tianis, Wynn Griffiths, and Joe Garz Garzoli. Here is Bagwell backing away. Boy, he had a long home run earlier. And he made the play of the day. On Dunson's slow roller. He had no play for Dunson. He threw the plate for a force out. While he was running towards second base. George Gorgelancek. Have you ever tried that backwards? Ken Nelson. And, and the... Trio video provides the all the television trucks. Now the pitch high. Well, it's been a long, a great year. The Cubs have shown great signs for the future. I haven't disagreed with Steve a single time all year <laughs> long. He hasn't smoked a better cigarette 13 years now. Two balls and a strike. High pop foul back. 
Kim Fields, a unit manager, and Jeanette Rivera, our production coordinator, and our studio coordinator, Mark Shaken. And of course, Bill Borson, our executive producer. Two balls, two strikes. He struck him out. And Karen held on to the foul tip. And now here we go. Into the final half of the ninth inning, the Cubs trailing by a run. And what, what poetic justice it would be if they rewarded this crowd standing to give them a, an ovation, a comfort behind victory again here today. We'll be back in a moment. You could say we were out for blood, and we found it. An icy cool corner with an eye for detail. The murders here are copycat killings. Richard Berge. I'm good with guns. Quick firing hot shot. I was damn near disassembled, Dave. He's a wolf in cop's clothing. Very kinky. But then, she's no angel either. Do you mind covering up your face? From the producers of Magnum P.I. Freeze! One West, Waikiki. Tonight at 10.30 on WGN Channel 9. Let me guess. One side of you craves easy chair comfort, while the other side itches for performance, right? Well, meet Buick Regal, with its famous 3800 V6 engine and grand touring suspension. Add to that an all-new interior with body-sensitive seats. And finally, there's a car for the two of you. Buick Regal. Throughout October at Builder Square, you can buy a First Alert Smoke Detector 2-pack and then help meet a very special need in your community when you leave one of the smoke detectors with us. Your local fire department will distribute the smoke detectors to families in need. And as a thank you for your donation, you'll receive a coupon good for 10% off your next purchase at Builder Square. Of course, chances are good that you'll be saving a whole lot more. WGN is proud to salute Chicago's Latino community during Hispanic Heritage Month. Harry Carey back at Wrigley Field. Here is Brian McRae. And Todd Jones on the mound for Houston, the hard-throwing right-hander. Looking Boy. for save number 15. Boy, they've used their staff again. Here's the ground ball sharply hit the B. Jones there. Over the first, easy out. One away, McCray rolls out. He's one out of five today, and here is Hojo. Todd Jones, a fine relief pitcher. Good fastball. One out. A little bit outside, ball one. A lot of the fans standing up. 10-9 now. The Giants made one in the top of the seventh and still batting. Trailing only by a run. Foul ball back. One and one. Come on, Hojo. Hit one like he used to for the Mets. One ball, one strike. Now ready. And the pitch. A little high ball, two. Two balls and the strike. One out. Johnson, two under three. Everybody's standing up in the bleachers. Two balls and the strike. The base hit down the left field line around first base. Hojo singles the left. 
And the tie runs at first. And here is Mark Grace. He's had a double and a homer. A homer came with one on. The double is 51st of the year. The Buick Games summary. Grace wins National League by doubles title with 51 up until now. The Cubs have had three winning seasons, 84, 89, 95, over the last 20 years. High pop foul back, strike one. Todd Jones on the hill. Johnson, the runner at first, one out. Fastball inside, almost hit him. A ball and a strike. That's all the Giants got with one. They now trail 10 to 9, bottom of the seventh. Ground ball up the middle, a base hit. Here goes Hojo holding up. Runners first and second. I think Hojo. When he was forced on the player to play, I think he hurt his leg a little bit. Runners first and second. Mark and Grace here is Sammy hit. Sosa. Howard Johnson has three hits. Sammy Sosa bidding for his third hit. And he'll, here's Mel Stottlemyre out to the mound to talk with Todd Jones. And what a way to end. A wonderful season for these great Cub fans who've turned out in the troubled and shortened season over 1,900,000 strong. What a way to end it with a ninth inning home run by Sammy Sosa. Listen to the crowd. They're yelling, Sammy, Sammy. Listen to them. Grace, a long lead at first. Swung and he missed. Grace represents a winning run. Johnson, the tying run at second. Bagwell, very wide of the bag at first. Whoa, a great save by his Estavio. Oh boy, what a play that was. Watch it. Good effort by Tony Estavio. And puts the tying and winning run into scoring position if that one gets by. One ball, one strike. One out. Runners first and second. Whoa, he swung at a pitch way outside. One ball, two strikes. Sammy's still a young hitter. He's going to learn to become even more disciplined at the plate than he is this year. And his discipline this year was much better than it was a year ago. One ball, two strikes. Struck him out. Boy, he didn't have one good swing. And there's two outs, and it's all up to one former Astro, Louis Gonzalez. Gonzalez, nothing out of three. He can hit the long ball. He's hit 13 homers. Jones, tough to hit. Good sinker. Fouled the pitch on the third base side, which would indicate he got around very late. 
Jones is throwing awfully hard, so you really have to tune it up if you're going to get around on him. And Louis can drive the ball into the gap in left center field. One strike and nothing. Oh, if he could pull one. Jones steps off the rubber. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Two out, two on. The Cubs trail by one. Eight to seven. One strike and nothing. Held up in time. And that evens it up a ball and a strike. Johnson, the tying run at second. 8 7 Houston. Ball high. There was a game last week where Jones walked three men in a row to fill the bases against Pittsburgh and Rich Audy then hit a home run to beat him. A home run would beat him right now too. Two balls and the strike. Swung in the middle. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on. And the baseball season is very close to an end in Chicago. Two balls, two strikes. Ball three, three and two. And Dunstan. No, we got the Ozzie Timmons. Ozzie Timmons coming up next. Listen to this crowd. Three and two. Ball four. The bases are loaded. And Ozzie Timmons is going to be the pinch hitter. Dunson earlier in the seventh inning on that slow roller where he would have beaten it out but Bagwell cutting across towards left center in front of Biggio who could never have made any play at all with the bases loaded this one Bagwell off balance through to the plate to Ford. Howard Johnson here's Timmons this ball game is over the season is over and the Astros are still alive for a wild card. They have beaten the Cubs eight to seven. And this season is over. Now, it isn't the Cubs dugout which is happy today. In contrast, it is the Houston Astro dugout. Well, the Cubs gave up all they had right down to the very last pitch. And Harry, it was quite a year for the Cubs. They're going to finish this season two games over 500. A great homestand where they were eight and three. The team battled every ball game. This series with Houston that was split two and two was a nail biter. Every game with comebacks on both sides. Houston is still alive in the wild card race. The Cubs have nothing to be ashamed of. It was a wonderful homestand. A very good season for them, and they've made great strides over last year, Harry. 24 games difference between last year and this year, and that's quite an improvement. Well, like I said a little earlier, we've often said wait till next year. This time, it really sounds prophetic because this team so much improved this year, it figures to be better next year. And if so, will either be cheering about a wild card team or probably and hopefully a division championship team. Third place this year, first place. How about that? I tell you, you wonderful fans. There isn't a game that passes by that I don't personally 
think of that. Where in the world are there fans like the Cubs? I don't care whether you win or you lose. The fans are there rooting for you. They're knocking you if you're not playing well, but not too often. But they love you. And they love the team. They love the players. They have a fond affection for the, the entire squad and for the whole organization, as a matter of fact. And they're still out in the bleachers, many of them don't want to leave as yet. Well, this is reminiscent a little bit of 1984. Remember when the Cubs, after winning the division, uh, circled the field with the manager Jim Fry saying hello to everybody everywhere? That's ho that isn't logical, maybe, or re reasonable today because you really didn't win anything. But it certainly conveys the hope of the f immediate future. And by immediate, immediate, I mean 1996. Well, do we have a commercial? All right, we'll be back now in a moment. American families have made their choice. Once again, they've chosen the Buick LeSabre as Family Circle Magazine's Family Car of the Year for reasons like safety, dependability, performance, and style. American families chose LeSabre as Family Car of the Year over every other sedan, foreign or domestic. Buick LeSabre, the American family, family car. Welcome to a new way to communicate. A new source of news, information, and software available through your computer 24 hours a day. This is the official America Online Tour. Let me show you how America Online really works. You just point and click. You've got mail. Hey, I've got mail. You can send and receive email even across the Internet. I've done that. Really? Scan the latest headline. Browse Time Magazine. Find out what's on TV with ABC Online. Look up facts in Compton's Encyclopedia. You can even explore the Smithsonian right on your computer. My son gets help with his homework. Call now for your free trial. You'll get free software and 10 hours of free online time your first month. America Online. It's knowledge. It's power. And? Okay. It's fun. Call now for no obligation free trial of America Online. You'll get free startup software and 10 hours of free online time your first month. Call now, 1-800-642-7400. Two solid hours. Four classic episodes. All from America's favorite hometown. Some one-horse town called Mayberry. We like it. The Andy Griffith Show first hit the air on October 3rd, 1960. Where did it all begin? And now, 35 years to the day, we're going to celebrate. Well, when will that be? Mayberry's 35th, a very special anniversary. Tuesday at 7 on WGN. Harry Carey back to Rigby Field where the season is over, and the Cubs gave us a great run for it. And the fans really appreciated it. From a personal standpoint, another year has come to an end. And hopefully, if the good Lord is willing, I'm looking forward to 1996 more than I have towards any season yet. And this is the end of my 51st season. I want to take just a moment to thank the crews. We've tried them, we've shown them to you, we've mentioned their names. Uh, and this is an outstanding crew that brings you Cub baseball uh, every year. Uh, people like Mandy who uh, try to get everything that we have to have. And uh, the cooperation of people too, there are too many of them to really know by name and to single them out. But in the final analysis is the people you work closest with. And I couldn't let a day like this go by with uh, Steve, we may argue, but I love you. Tyler. 
this can't be me breaking down. And Tommy, you leave me it's, We wish you the best of everything and look forward to seeing you again. And everybody else, boys in the radio side, Ron Santo and Tommy and the engineers, Don Albert and Sammy Humans. It's been a great, great time. And God willing, we'll have more fun at the end of next season. Now, I think we better get back to the Budweiser play of the day. This play, not only the Budweiser play of the day, even in a cup defeat, but let me tell you something. This is provided by the man who was a star of the year. Mark Grace was outstanding, hitting, fielding, whatever, uh, uh, leading uh, the ball club. He's more uh, nominally with Dunstan now, the, uh, the oldest man on the ball club in years of service. But both of them have been so great. Mark has had an outstanding year, so has Sean. Okay, now, the credits. The producer director of Cubs Baseball is Arne Harris and our associate producer, Joe Carnell. Well, that's it for this year. Our next telecast will be the 1996 season opener. We don't have a date on that yet, but it'll be here against the San Diego Padre. So, God willing, hope you have as much fun as we have. So long, everybody. Chicago Cubs Baseball on WGN. Brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers who reminds you friends know when to say when. Your local Buick dealers, the new symbol for quality in America. Your Chicagoland Builders Square. Stop on in, they'll get you squared away. Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. Aflac, insuring over 38 million people worldwide. And by Southwest Airlines at convenient Midway Airport, the official airline of WGN-TV Sports. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. We stood side by side with Mike Boren when he laid 90,000 feet of sod. We carried the team's equipment when Mike Jr. pitched his first game. Then we chauffeured the whole family off to Angelo's to celebrate. GMC Sierra, with standard four-wheel ABS and the same steel ladder frame built into our commercial trucks, it's a truck built for the way you live. Sierra is built for life. See the full line of GMC trucks at your GMC truck dealer. WGN is proud to salute Chicago's Latino community during Hispanic Heritage Month. Inning. Brought to you by your local Chicagoland and Northern Indiana GMC truck dealers. Welcome to the 10th inning. Well, it was, it was quite a year for the Cubs. It was quite a series. In fact, this was probably the most exciting series of the year for the Cubs. It culminated a very good homestand where the Cubs went 8-3. and three, And they had to win them all here and hope that Colorado lost them all to get in postseason play. And they gave you a very good run for your money. If you watch the series, you'll realize that although it wasn't an artistic success, it certainly was exciting. It was exciting every ball game. The last two, Houston won. The first two, the Cubs won. And they had won eight games in a row heading into the third game of this series. The Cubs fought. They scrapped. They did everything they could in the end. They just were a little short the last couple of days. But there were some career years out of the Cubs this year. Mark Grace having an outstanding year. Sammy Sosa driving in runs just about every day. Certainly, Brian McRae was a great addition to this team, along with Jamie Navarro. And the two guys brought over from Houston, Scott Service and Louis Gonzalez, did quite a job. So we'll be back with the GMC highlights of this one coming up after these messages. Kirk finally escapes the kids and goes on a Cinderella dream date. All those times I told you to get lost, what I really meant was this. But when the clock strikes 12, 
It's Pumpkin City. If you kiss me, I'll have to hurt you. Kurt, Ben, Simon interviews his brother for a job. Describe yourself in five words. I'm about to smack you. Perfect! There's just one catch. I'm the muffin girl. Simon, tonight at 7 on WGN Channel 9. For over 90 years, we've built a reputation for truck strength. Now we're adding a new dimension of even greater comfort with a luxury of leather and a refined new interior surrounded by all the strength you'd expect from GMC Truck, which may be the greatest comfort of all. You know, I never really learned my school fight song. Oh, I know it. Hell, alma mater. War is a feeling for truth. Give me some music. They lit up scoreboards from Ann Arbor to Tuscaloosa. They were warriors of Saturday afternoon. Well, the son of no sir. Oh, the victory strike up the band. Now relive it all with Burger King Legends of College Football Cups. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Obviously, <laughs> a wiser choice than a fight song album. They're all true blue. We'll all stick together. In the third inning, the Cubs almost put it away. They scored six. Jose Hernandez comes up. He dumps it into left field. Then Derek May misplays it. And the Cubs were off to the races, literally and figuratively. They made it very tough on Doug Drabeck today. He only lasted three innings, giving up six runs on six hits. Then it's Steve Traxel through a drawn-in infield. He drives the ball through the left side. Traxel, one of the best hitting pitchers in the league, and he's certainly helping himself here. Howard Johnson had quite a day. This one into right field, driving in his 21st and 22nd run of the year. Howard had three hits today and a walk in the final game of the season. And Mark Grace, what a year he had. Driving in 92, he had three hits today. This is his 16th home run of the year. And the Cubs at that point were on top six to nothing. It turned out that it wasn't quite enough as Houston went on to victory here today to keep their wild card hopes alive. And we'll be back with a final word after these messages. The new Jimmy has all the strength of a GMC truck. Including 50 advances in sound isolation. So it's easy to keep the outside world outside. The all-new Jimmy. Hear all about it at your GMC truck dealer. So the Nittany Lions of the Fighting Irish have given us another great college football game. And here are two tired generals looking for each other at midfield. Tough break, Joe. Yeah, I know. The tie's too much. It's nice, but maybe next time something in a crew neck. Uh, how do you think that'd be too casual? Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Look, Joe, it's not the end of the world. Next cup, think pastels. It was quite a year for the Chicago Cubs and a lot of work to be done this offseason. Both Ed Lynch and Andy McPhail have a lot of decisions to make. Some of the guys you saw in uniform today will not be here next year. Many of the guys you did see in uniform this entire season will be back. And the Cubs have a lot of hope for the future. For the first time in a long time, the minor league system was productive and they played very well. And there is a lot of young players on the horizon. So 1996 certainly is going to be quite a year. We look forward to it. And wait till next year is not a hollow saying this year. So we'll see you opening day next year. Hopefully you have a wonderful winter. That's it from Wrigley Field. For Harry Carey, Tom Brenneman, this is Steve Stone. So long, everybody. has been brought to you by your local Chicagoland and Northern Indiana